All right, folks. I'm back. All right, now I got to set up for this. I haven't really done this previously. Give me a sec. Okay. It's game time. Put on our game faces. Put on our game face. Okay. Hmm. Where are you? You're not showing up. Hello? Hmm. Weird. What is... Huh. Okay. Well, that's weird. Try this again. A sec. That doesn't seem to work. problem here. Wait, I think this is fine now. Hold up. <clears throat> no? Oh, no, that doesn't work. Oh. Oh, it's probably because uh, Shashinko's thing was capturing it too. Okay. It was trying to access from two different places. Haven't done it in order. All right. Huangi, dajiahao. Welcome, welcome. So today is another big day. We're getting into reviewing. Uh, reviewing our Chinese portion. I gotta remind myself what unit did I actually start? Uh. <clears throat> All right, so what we're doing today for the Chinese portion of things is to finally do a uh, a tentative take, right? A tentative take. Tentative takes. Or like a progress report, things that are ongoing are happening right now. So it has been greater than 50 days. That's the last time we did one of these. 50 days. I decided to extend it from 25 days, partially due to the nature of language learning volume getting relatively smaller than, you know, as you're going through the paces. So it's been 50 days. So we're going to try to summarize roughly 50 days. 
it's a little less than 50 days of um, material. So we're going to cover... I practiced uh, the four days before. So four days before. Did that quick yield good review. Right, review in prep for today. Always nice to get a bump, a bump before we do this. Uh, it's going to cover 14 units. 14 units. I don't quite remember what section they are. I had an idea, but now no, I don't. So it's 14 units. We did, uh, oh, it was actually five days of review. So for the two, two of the days, two of the days and completing things up, like, uh, we were doing like legends, legend stuff to review quickly. And then the last three days, we did five, five, four, five, uh, with writing as the output. And then we were st storyboarding, storyboarding and whatnot. That's important because that's probably how I'm going to do things. So before anything, before we proceed further, as per usual, I make my general, general statements. This is uh, not a comprehensive, uh, comprehensive teaching thing. I'm not teaching anything, right? It's it's not comprehensive teaching. Um, this is purely purely anecdotal. It's anecdotal. Um, this is how I. I check myself, you know, keep myself honest, check myself, uh, self-evaluation, right? Or self-reflection and whatnot. Largely whatever comes up that's important. Um, so it's not serving as some sort of manuscript or accuracy. Uh, I guess that's also a thing. This is not focus on accuracy. I think that tends to be a thing. I feel like most people find very discomforting and not focusing on accuracy in the sense that it is not the primary objective. The primary objective is to find, find what I know what I know, what I have been doing, not really find, um, demo, I guess the word would be demo, demo, what I know, demo, what possibly I don't know or have forgotten. Uh, and what I did. What I did so far. Right. As much as uh, people love to be right all the time, I'm. It, it's not really all that necessary. It's all part of the learning process. Not to not to diminish that being accurate is fantastic, and it's definitely fantastic to be accurate. At some point, I think I'm going to say relatively conservatively uh relative conservatively if someone wants to say something about my accuracy um maybe something egregious is okay like if i did something egregious which that's kind of very subjective it, it'll be up to me if i feel that it's germane or not but i'm gonna say conservatively i think i'm relatively relatively sufficient in the things I know in the things I know so I'm close enough to writing a lot of times I'm close enough in saying things fairly all right so if 
that is the problem, then that's something I'm not focused on. Like fine tuning and tweaking comes much, much later, right? Or at least in my opinion. So if it's something egregious, like, oh man, this is way off the mark, then I, I'm more than uh, open to hearing, hearing suggestions and whatnot for those things. Okay. So what do tentatives takes? What's the format? I think it's a little bit streamlined because I have my Japanese review uh, one as a baseline. So what does that look like? Well, uh, we start with our uh, recall. So our recall. This is where we go over those 14 units. And I think we're going to straight up um, reiterate on whatever I had written. Reiterate on what has written. Previously, I did like some fun activities because I didn't have a developed structure yet. Uh, what I quote unquote created. Um, things like I took all the characters, I wrote all the characters out, like, and then I tried to connect them and form words. That was a fun exercise. However, now we're like in the territory where this part can include like over 500 characters, which um, realistically, the way I was having fun with the stuff is, would be unmanageable in a very relative, relative, uh, some short length of time like as much as I would love to sit here and write all the characters as many characters as I can that would take a very long time so we're going to reiterate on the 14 units each unit separated in its own like little box or something after that uh, I think it would be time to review the I'm going to call it the learning structure or I think I called it the content structure so far. So this is particularly, and this is uh, confined to Duolingo, the Duolingo Chinese course, because uh, I have not engaged in additional things yet. Unlike the Japanese course, I have not added uh, an additional, like a form of um, immersion, for example. I do have plans for that. However, that's a that's another 50 days out. Like, I didn't start the Japanese side of things until, well, a bit later. I can already see there are a few things that I would like to acquire before, before then. So no, not yet, right? Immersion, not yet. So this is going to be relatively simple. It's going to go over the structure. Uh, I'm going to over lay out what I'm doing in the Chinese course, which can be, it's very parallel, parallel to the, uh, Japanese, Japanese course. They used to be different. However, most of the stuff that I do half of the, over half of the stuff that I do with the Japanese course is actually from my exposure to the Chinese course. So what that structure is like, I'm going to do it again largely due to like continuity there are obviously people who are only interested in chinese and people who are only interested in the japanese course or by extension they don't care about duolingo they just wanted to be they're just curious and they i only interact with them or indirectly or whatever during their own interests because it's chinese or japanese it's often not the case in which both Japanese and Chinese people have limited time. So, you know, they divert their attention to specific things. And then lastly, uh, I will talk about some anecdotal, anecdotal observations, I guess. Uh, 
where am I gonna go with this? I, I guess we're gonna talk about things like experiences that I've encountered. Like reflections on experiences that maybe perhaps uh, are similar. Similar. Or uh, different. Right, different uh, from Japanese. Right, from Japanese. This can be something that's inward or outward. Um, there's quite a lot of uh, contrast between the two. And maybe how that affects my learning, I suppose. Address some common questions. Which I said throughout the lessons, but uh, how learning, like for example, the interaction, the interaction between, the interaction between Japanese, Japanese and Chinese, that has been that's probably the most common question. Um, that isn't the super like the early introduction stuff. How long have you been studying? Do you like writing? That that kind of thing. But this one is a little deeper. I touched upon this a couple times. I had the opportunity to touch upon this a couple times. And then lastly, if time permits, it's very cursory. I don't necessarily emphasize this too much, but maybe talk about distant future stuff. Like distant future stuff. Like what is what kind of I guess timetable, timetable. Like where's the immersion part kind of thing? Like where's the immersion? Where are we going with this? And if there's anything at all, um, how how we're gonna, what are we gonna change? Maybe, what change the change the right or going to change talk about some of that so so for now we're gonna cruise and do the big the big review right it's kind of a nice it's kind of a nice thing i i think doing this here doing a recall um Worth mentioning. Oftentimes, it it feels great. It it may feel. I do this because it feels nice. Nice to uh, reflect and have an opportunity, like have a moment, have a moment to yourself. to uh, use use what you have been working on and making it a constructive part of your routine right I think uh, without going into much uh, it gives you a perspective a lot of times perspective when you output things which I talked about a little bit earlier today about the idea of practice. Practice, practice not necessarily involving learning. Practice for the sake of finding where you are now. Like, oh, these are the things you know, these are the things you don't know. Not practice and then correcting which is still part of the act of learning um a lot of times um this part is purely to see things that i have practiced for a while right okay so once again not focus on accuracy right okay so let's uh get a new layer here okay <clears throat> so let's get into it. How 
gonna arbitrarily call these units because I don't remember what units they come from. So let's start with this color. Okay. So we'll just uh, ceremoniously, unceremoniously call this unit one. It's not really unit one. I, I don't know what unit it is. <laughs> okay. The earliest I can remember. is a uh, direction so how did that work hmm start with directions so uh, so start with the model right the model Dirty, right? Dirty. Naughty, naughty, not uh, naughty. Yo, uh, yo. Zo. Uh, uh, 
，边，右，右边，左边，旁边。嗯，前，呃，前，呃，前，后。This. Uh, uh, me. Right. Front. Back. Front. 嗯，我们的，我们的，他们的。Was a location. Uh. School. The. Uh. Pathing. Yeah, pathing words as well. Um, yeah, doll, uh, doll, doll. Actually, I think it's this order. I need one. Yep. Next, uh, I think that's good. Let's go down as opposed to left to right. Okay. Unit two.
hobbies. The ones with the Dianao, uh, Dianao you'll see. Like Wan, uh, Wan, Xiao Wu, Han Shu, Chang Ge, Chang Ge, Ting, like, like Ting. Ting Ying Yu, uh, Ting Ying Yu, Ying Ye, or Ying Yu Ge. I, uh, Zui I, Zui Xi Huan. I think we got, uh, most of them. So, hobbies. Go with. That's kind of tall. Uh, let's kind of find it out a little. Uh, how big? That's a little too big. Uh, J. Uh, Xi Huan. Xi Huan. Okay, I uh <clears throat> I said a bunch of things. Um I think now I had the uh... Oh wait Yeah, no, you'll see. Oh, yeah. Um 
唱歌。唱歌，按按书，嗯。跳舞，呃，呃 ，I don't think it has a left radical. Tao. 上班<咳>，上班，下班，上学，上学，上学，啊，中，回到，在家，回家，<咳>早饭，午饭，晚饭。Maybe something with time. I think we're gonna ignore time and weeks and stuff. <clears throat> uh, unless it's like special. What could be special? Like Xing Ti Ye. Xiang Ye, Xiang Ye. Right. That stuff. I think we're just gonna avoid. Like. Uh. Ban like thirty like, Liu Liu Dian Ban, Liu Dian, Liu Dian Ban. Nian. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna ignore those. We'll place them in this special place somewhere. <coughs> I told myself I'd do that for the Japanese portion. I totally forgot. I totally forgot about it. Um. So what did I say? Uh, 上班哦。呃，上班。上下班，上学，呃That is, I think that's the right one. Eh. Ah, function. Hmm. 
สองเออ actually Extra stroke. Okay, I got it. This one's a bit rough. Um, I don't have a very, very nice, like, mean way of doing this. That's fine. เอ่อเช่เจ้าเช่เจ้าเทีทวงเอ่อทีทวง so sleep and wake up right Jiao Fan, Wu Fan, Wan Fan. I think that's about it. Hmm. Outside of time. Yeah, that's that's good enough. Uh, okay. Unit four. Unit four. Payments, probably payments. Um. <clears throat> So payments. We had a counter. Like, 这家呃，这家 we're gonna place like 这家饭馆，这家饭馆。嗯。啊，一共，哎，一共。Uh, we'll do 一共 Then we have the denominations. Uh, one, one, ten, one, ten, bai, zhi, huai, huai, mao, ah, mao, and fen. Throw in my in there or buy for buying that that works out. 
and uh, way right way ah, uh, 便宜<咳>便宜信用卡呃，信用呃，信用卡，肩呃，肩肩肩肩肩肩肩肩肩肩，收，手直收呃，直收。I think that's that'll cover most of the things. So let's start with. Something like. Uh, eh. Okay. Uh. She my. The job. The, yeah. The job. That looks weird. Hold up, hold up. Uh, no, I mean it looks weird, but I think way, way, way looks weird in general, right? Why does it look so? Oh wait, oh wait. Maybe I 
make this a little bit Ah, uh, it's fine. Uh, Koye. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're gonna leave out negations. Yeah. A boo is gonna come up somewhere. A kui bu kui. Uh. Ah, sing bu sing. Ah, you know what? Sing bu sing. I remember in this unit there was uh yang yi uh pian yi dia right yang yi dia uh sing bu sing uh okay so zhi zhi shou zhi shou shou And then sing. Wait. Yes. Sing yong. Ah. Uh, I could do do do. What do I do? Uh. Ah, uh, yes. Sing yong ka. Um. Oh, there's also Mao. Uh, Mao Qian. Right, I think we're okay with that one. Moving right along. Four down. Ten more to go. The close the the sooner we get to the uh the next day. This is the last one from three days ago. The fresher it is. So, we're getting. Uh, the fifth one is TV and film. TV and film. Uh, so we have things like. Ding ying. Uh, ding ying, ding shi. Right? Ding ying, ding shi. Shang wang. Shou ji. Uh, shou ji. And like, shou ji hao ma. The pivot hao ma. Uh, jie mu. Jie mu. Um, T U, uh, T U. So T U Jamu, Dian Shi Jamu, right? Dian Shi Jamu, uh, Ming Xing, Ming Xing, also Hanguo, 
韩国哪个哪个韩国兵 ？Who's my is my mnemonic to bump them all together？ 呃，干什么？干什么？做什么？呃，想要 ？Maybe？ 你一直想想干什么？想做什么？啊，报纸，报纸。And my mnemonic for 报纸 ，the 纸 part is egami。So keep forgetting。呃， I think that's pretty much everything. So where do we start? Start with a question. Uh, ooh. Uh. So, I think the second stroke is longer. Yes. Oops. Don't go on, Shima. Uh, do. Do. Hmm. I don't have a feeling there was another. I don't remember. Fine. Uh, we can throw in Khan. Oh, it's probably Khan again. So. Okay. Khan. On about wait, no, that doesn't seem N no, no, that's that's okay, yeah. Oh, 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 Actually, take that for last. Uh, T, E, E, uh, Ronin. E is a Ronin, or yes. <laughs> EU. Uh. Don't ask. EU. Actually, if you figure it out, feel free. Uh, T. U. A. D. N. S. Mm. 
Ensure. Yeah. The ensure. Uh, demo. Demo. Uh, Dianying. This is where we pivot. Oh, Yong. I forgot about Yong. Uh, Yong. Yong. Xiang Wang. Uh, Xiang Wang. Yong. So, G. Uh, G. So D with it with how ma how ma wait uh which ma is this oh no it gets the this one. How ma? Uh. And the last thing is like, dinging. Is there involved dinging? Right, now I gotta, gotta pigeon it, uh, gotta pigeon it, pigeonhole in the use of Anguo, uh, Anguo, and Mingxing, Ching. Oops. I really gotta consider taking an unprecedented break from writing. I can definitely feel developing some pressure points on my on my wrist. Uh potentially short of RSI at this point. It's like I'm aggravating. I'm aggravating my arm, my wrist a little bit more than usual. Okay, I think that's fine.
I don't know if I miss anything else. So uh, let's go and let's pick a cool color. So we're finally into uh two days ago. Unit six. Or like in quotes, unit six. Uh location. So in terms of location, this is not the same as direction. Location. So, in terms of location, we have... Well, when we're talking about location... Dao, right? Dao. To look for... Oh, this one's confusing. Oh no, this one's actually... Location is not very helpful. Our mnemonic was... Okay, it's a mix. So we have kind of like going to a restaurant vibe, right? But also describing stuff. So what was it? Uh, 桌子, uh, 桌子, 椅子, 椅子, right? But 桌子, 桌子上, 桌子下, so 上 and 下, on top and below, 倒, uh, then we have a bunch of random things like bing xiang uh bing xiang uh bing xiang li so like fan jin li bing xiang li using li as a location so location the location uh like zuo zi li zuo zi uh zuo zi li um Restaurant stuff. Hi Don. My Don. Dian Tai. Wu Yuan. Ding Wei. Why? Outside. Why? Uh. Hui <coughs> Jian. Uh. Hui Jian. Um. I can't. Can't. And Tai Dan, Yingwen Tai Dan, Mai, Mai Dan, or where did Mai Dan? Uh, the, 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 I know where this. All right, I think we got this. Oh, and Ting Jin, Ting Jin, like Jin, Ting Jin. So oh, Jin, as in like coming in, Jin. Please come in. Okay, I remember the the thing that we came up with. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the bung. My my hand moved that it had a stroke up there, so I think we're good. Oops. This character is so. Oh, he's so cursed. Hmm, Fang Jian. Jian Li. Uh, Bing Xiang, Bing Xiang, Bing Xiang, uh, 
No, Ping Xiang Li. Mayo Tai <clears throat> outside motivation. Mayo Tai. Uh. Chi uh, Hansi Chi Hansi Why? Uh, <clears throat> wait, hmm, yeah. Ang yo Uh Ang yo Tao 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 Oh. Oh, Let's go there. <clears throat> oh, no, no, no. Right here. Two. Oh. Wait. Uh. Does it? <clears throat> Does it? Maybe I made it too. Ah, uh, no, that looks fine. Ooh, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Fu Yun, uh, Fu Yun, Fu Yun, uh, uh, ta 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 Ting. Ding Wei Uh, wait Yep Uh, Ting 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 Yo. It's a
Um, when England Taiwan I uh daughter E. Daughter. Daughter. Chang. I can, uh, I can fit twelve in here. Okay. <clears throat> Uh Ah Anti. What the? Uh, well, not just well, my done work. Oh. I totally skipped Don. <laughs> Immediately I looked up, it's like, wait a minute. Uh, Don. No. Uh, two, right? Yes. Hmm. I feel like I make this part too deep most of the time. That's good enough. Um, I think we covered most of the. This 
squeeze it in here. Uh, yeah, what are you new? Unit seven? Oh. Keeping track. Now oh, we have a lot of time. Uh, now we're going into the market, right? So market, 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 market. So for market, wait, hold up. Oh no, I did it. Okay. So market has a lot of stuff. Um, we arranged it in more like uh, maybe like E T N. Uh, E T N. Maybe Sing T. E T N. Right, uh, 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 yes, or and there's other things, um, Chang Yao, Chang Yao, Chang Yao, Bang, Bang. Dian Dongqi Mi Uh Mi Chu Chai Mian Tiao Bao Zi or no not Bao Zi uh Mian Bao Uh Ji Dan Ji Dan So like to share e to share or e share to not share Bao Dai Right Uh Xing Okay. I think we got this. Um Okay. Um. Uh, Chao Shu. Uh,
方式。方式，走。想要。Too deep. <clears throat> 想要Okay. Okay. That. Not how you start that. That doesn't look right, does it? Maybe this is longer. Why it makes it look weird? <clears throat> yeah, no, that that's that's good. Time with this, this one. It's okay.
me. Wait, 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 wait. Nice. I'm not sure if this shulk exists. <clears throat> Shu Tai. Shu Shu Tai. Oops, I forgot the G. Uh, ne? Done. Uh, okay. Uh, e. Uh, she was. Che Che That's gross. Very gross. Much gross. Bow and die. Xin 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 Yeah Uh running out of space Okay Yeah Wait yeah, we're good. 
We're good. <clears throat> um. What was that? Unit eight. I mean, unit seven. Halfway. Halfway. I think this is the second hobby thing now. The second hobby thing. More more hobbies. More hobbies. Um or was it? Kinda like hobbies. Um Yeah, yeah, it's kinda hobbies. So uh had some questions first. Wei Shima. Right. Wei Shima. Ying Wei. So Yeah. So yi. Dong. No. Not Yun Dong. It's not the sports thing yet. So oh, it's more like, um,. Traveling. Traveling. So, uh, Sibanya. Uh, Sibanya. Uh, uh, Sibanya Ren. Right? Or Sibanya Yu. Yu. Sibanya Ying Yu. Uh, Ying Dong. Uh, Ying Du. Ying Du. Was uh Liu uh Li Liu uh Liu Liu Hai Zhao Hai Zhao Hai Zhao Ji Hai Zhao Ji Is that it? I feel like that's pretty much the only thing. It was about going. Oh no. Uh, yeah. She she, right? She she. She she. I how probably hobbies. I how. I how. That's all I remember. So let's just go with that. That's all I remember. So let's go with Wei. I'm not sure if you do this first. Or the other way first. Hmm. Hey, Shema. Uh. I think that thing. Uh, so Uh, so
Estoy... Ali, Ali. There's no, 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 that's that's not right. Uh, Leo. Uh, Leo. Leo is. It's definitely this. And. Probably. Yes. The Yo The Yo Uh Ting Song Ting Song is a thing too. Holy heck What uh Ting Ting Remember the left radical. Song Ting, yeah, Ting. I think that's good. That looks fine. Ting Song. Hey. Okay. Uh, Ibanya. Uh, C. C ban Oh C ban ya Ren C Throw it all in. What? Why? Why am I making it so big? Ugh. Whatever. It's good enough. Uh, Ying Dong. Um uh, Indu uh, not do Indu Indu Uh Pai Dwe Hi. Uh. Hi, Dao. Not Pai Dui. 
party. I tell. I I tell. I tell. Okay, I think that's good enough. I don't remember anything else. We're getting close to yesterday. Really close to yesterday. I think this is the last one, so... Almost home free. Almost there. <laughs> okay. Uh, unit 9. This is about health. Uh, Tuan Lian. So, this one's huge, I think. <clears throat> so. Jueda. Uh, Jueda. So, Jueda. Lei. Hang. Kai Shu Kai Shu Duan Lian Duan Lian Tu Yi Tu Yi Tu Yi Tu Yi Hung Zuo Jiang Tai Jiang No Shen Ti Shen Ti Dian Kang. Then we had food. Like, uh, Hai Shu. The choices. Hai Shu. Shanghai. Shanghai Tai. Beijing. Right. Beijing. Uh, Hangu. Uh, Ruben. Hangu. Zungu. Ingu. Uh, Ingu. 面条面条面条米饭面条米饭肉 Jiro Jiro Yang Ro That's it. Not too much, right? Oh wait. And Yin Yin Liao Yin Liao Drinks Drinks Uh, Jeda, Je. We're getting smaller. Okay. Uh, Jeda. I think we're fine. 
I don't know if this truck is there. I don't remind myself in the future. Hmm. And then... Huh. Uh... I swear I can't get Pung to look alright. <laughs> uh it looks so gross. Um I think it's because Ugh. No wait. Oh, because uh wait wait wait, wait hold up. I mean, it looks okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I... <clears throat> so... I... Oh, no. I sure. Kai cursed. Uh, Kai. I sh. Kai sure. Okay. On oh, Leah. Juan, Juan, Juan is such a okay. Uh, okay, I got it. Right? <sighs> That's right. No. Wait. Um Yes. Yes. One Leah. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ee. Uh, which e? I think it's the e. I've been overusing this e. Do we? Do we? Hmm. Mang bu mang. Uh, 
工作。工作，身身体，身体。身身体，呃，健康。I'm starting to feel some fatigue. Uh, Tian Kang. Food. Put it over here. Whenever I hear "hi," I think of "hiking," but I don't know why that stands for river yet. Hiking, hiking, but it is water, so hiking. Or like, it's more like a like a water side. Like a、uh, next to water, like a like a trail or something hiking, or it might be park or water park or a lake. I, I I'm not quite sure anymore. Hmm.、Huh. It might be beach, actually. Yeah. Hmm.、Huh. Beijing, uh, Beijing. Japan. Korea. China. Um. I sure. Are you sure? Uh. 
Oh. That's fine. That is not the right character. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take two. Yo, roll. Yang, roll. Jiro. Uh. Okay, that's fine. All right, we're finally in business. Finally got to yesterday's yesterday's thing. to do some resizing kind of want to fit them all in here can we smash oh no there's no way yeah there's no way might as well do it now Yeah, ain't, ain't no way, ain't no way this is gonna, it's gonna make it editing magic. I was gonna do like two different panels or two different layers, but I think this is fine. Two unit ten up here. Chaos. Embrace the chaos. Okay. Uh let's go with Okay. Yesterday. Pretty pretty straightforward now, right? Uh this one is more about getting around. Um, so what, where is it? Ah, 
So, Huang Ying, right? Uh, Huang Ying, Huang Ying Ning, for whatever reason, Huang Ying Ning, uh, Ning, Huang Ying Ning, Huang Ying Ni, Ning, Huang Ying Ning. And we're done. <laughs> uh, uh, 可以, right? 可以, uh, 需要, 北边, uh, 帮忙, 怎么走, 于是, uh, Fujun Go Fuchu Tsu Yan Gung Gung, uh, Gung Gung Tito Fun Tia 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 I men, one men, I men, one men, uh, yo dear, chung dear, ifu, uh, ifu, ifu. Yep, those are all, all, all our, all our things. So let's get to it. <clears throat> Whenever I get stuck, it kind of makes me laugh. Oops. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's it. Baby. She Uh, 
帮忙。怎么走？走？怎么走？库存。只是做 ，OK，OK，、okay. okay. 租租。I gotta be careful with this, cause there's one that has things extended, and there's one that doesn't. And one xiang, xiang, and this is zu. So I gotta be careful with that. And I think about it. Different types of buses. I don't know. Dunko. Dunko. T. Peter. No, 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 no. That's correct. One minute. Uh, just kidding. Ifu. Okay. All right. 
I gotta give myself some pet talk here. We're almost there. We got this. Uh, let's go over here for the unit. Unit 11. Uh, unit 11 is time. So this part, I do need to... Uh, no, not, not really. Oh yeah, this part is good. We cover most of the time thing. Uh, this also has something to do with time to do something. We, I made it about studying. So what do we have? So, Jia, right? Jia, he. So, Jia yi ke. Make sense. Jia yi ke. Uh, shu, uh, shu dian. Ah, no. Dian, ah, not the the other way. Uh, no, no. Uh, no. Xiao, Xiao Shu. No. But yeah, Xiao, uh, Xiao Shu, uh, Xiao Shu, uh, Xiao Shu, Dian Jung, Dian Jung, Fan Jung, Miao, Deng, Deng. Do Shu I do Shu Is Is Ju 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 Xie 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 Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right, we, we got this. I, I'm okay. We, we got this. Um, It's, uh, yeah. Make this a little larger. Dang it. Ugh. This is so gross looking.
Let's choose a random number. I think we're gonna go with Wu. Uh, Leo. Okay, hold, hold, uh, yeah, done. Expressions, expressions. And I Okay, okay. 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 Um uh. Dian Uh, meow. Sao Admittedly, I don't do this at all at the moment. Go. So, hmm. 
idea. Uh, this is not. Something many people like to say very, very often. Uh, who way? Who way? Say, Sure. Mm. Don't think so. Okay. To be a little bit more conservative. <laughs> okay. Yes. A little bit more conservative. Uh. more to go uh dinner tableware tableware oh we're just going uh, we're just going right in this stuff is fresh this stuff is fresh 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 uh ta uh Okay. Ah. 
盘子。名字，嗯，嗯，果汁，果汁。果汁，啤酒。啤酒，德国。办公室。啊，天，嗯蛋糕。香蕉，香蕉，紫色块。It's a little too big. Oops. Uh, no, no. Shoot. Oh, uh, shoot. Uh huh. 
Very out. Hmm. Then. Yeah. Peter. Okay. <laughs> Let's try to stick thirteen in here. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. We got plenty of space, right? 13. Oh, yeah. No, we have plenty of space. Oh, I overcompensated. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, let's do it here. Uh, oh, I see the finish line. <laughs> I see the finish line. All right, we're doing sports now. Um, so sports. <clears throat> so, uh, yin, uh, yin dong, uh, yin dong. So, yin dong, ti ma, yin dong, ti ma, uh, you, 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 uh, you, 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 uh, you, you, how bu, ti zu qiao, yi zu. 踢足球，打篮球，打篮球，出去。Phrases like 跑步跑跑的最好。呃，跑呃跑半个跑半个跑半个。小时的, uh, 小时的步, for example, or we'll use papu. Well, that's really it. Honestly, the, the unit 13 was actually kind of short. Maybe I didn't need to shrink it. I could have sworn I wrote way more than this. Huh. All right. Oh, we're ahead of time, too. I'm gonna be sleeping well tonight. Uh, unit 13, so... Okay. Uh... Young, uh... Sing Ti Wu. Throw that in.
Oh, I didn't check. Yeah, it's fine. I didn't check on this yesterday. I'm sure it's this one. There's definitely a reason I recall these in a specific order. Uh, it wasn't obvious. Oh, wait. Wait. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I feel like there's more to this. No. Oh, oh, wait. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Also, there. And, uh, let's use pow, let's use pow -poo.
So un so not satisfying writing this character. Okay. Uh All right. All right. And we squeeze in one last one. Okay. Last one. Do it. We're finally here. Finally here. Unit 14. It's about I uh, asked a date asking someone out. Okay, just go down the list. Okay. Let's finish strong, I suppose. Finish strong. Let's go with
this one. I think it's that one. Uh, Gao Su. Gao Su. Gao Su. Ichi. Hmm. And Ichi. Chi. Works. Let's see. 
Uh, tuba. That's gross. Ugh. How can you make this not so up heavy? Okay, that's fine. Uh. Wait, yeah. Wait, yeah. Wait, yeah. Lie. Uh, go, go, uh, lie, go. Uh, 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 Laman, 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 uh, Laman. Laman. Okay. All right. I thought that was. A lot too. Hmm. Okay. All right, we're good. I did forget a few things, but I can't remember them, so that's fine. <clears throat> that's fine. Oh. All right, I got light breather before I have like an hour and a half. I'm going to go over schedules and talk about a few things. Okay. <clears throat> oh, we. All right. So what? We did that. It's all good. Now we're going to talk about structure, right? Structure. So, not so run it down, run it down very quickly. Spend like 30 minutes running down. So here's our right content content creation sort of speaking content creation uh duolingo structure or yeah yeah oh let's just say learning structure Uh, hmm. We become awfully specific, and now, kind of. Okay, 
So this is the content structure. And then we'll add in uh, whatever else I'm doing outside. If I have other things. The learning structure. <clears throat> Study. Study structure, right? Okay. So, how do we break this up? So, we start with the so day ones, right? Day ones. We have lesson set, the first lesson set. The first lesson set. Uh, I should write dual lingo here. So first lesson set, and lesson sets uh span from actually as low as three. I've seen three. No, I might have seen two. I'm pretty sure I've seen two in the Chinese course. Two like six i don't think i've ever seen seven six uh six lessons total All right so we do those lessons um we do those we do those lessons um after we complete the lesson set we go to the hanzi Hanzi. The Hanzi section. <clears throat> and typically we do a 15 minute session. Uh, at, uh, at least a 15 minute session. Ideally, well, not really. So then after the 15 minute section, Right. We do a construction. We do a construction section, which means uh, we take the characters, the the Hanza, the Hanza, Hanza, and vocabulary. And attempt to attempt to either group them together. So there are multiple things we can do. We can group them together. By the following. Which is something Duolingo has pretty much ingrained into me at this point. So we have a uh, meaning or right meaning. Uh, it could be antonyms, right? Antonym relationships, uh, synonym relationships, stories, uh, meaning, right? And associations, right? right? Well, technically all of these are associations. So stories, um, commentary, whatever we can find, right? Uh, we can also group them by sound. So like uh, re similar reads, maybe. Similar reads. Like near, near rhymes, sometimes near rhymes. Uh, partial identity. Uh, th these are all the same. It's expressing the same thing. Um, <clears throat> and then um, writing. So writing. Visual. Visual. Sim uh, visual similarities. So it, it's usually dealing with radicals. Radicals. Or, or like... Or even Japanese. All of this is sub 
subjected to Japanese so let's just write a side note so like identical radicals similar similar or identical radicals right now when you're grouping to them together often you're thinking about similarities except for like the antonym example however um if they are you have to remember that um no i guess i already made a, a mark remark about that but this is in contrast differences can be used as well differences can be used and that is uh that is often compared in my opinion compared to japanese so not only if they are similar in meaning sound or writing or visual but if they are different they are dramatically different like significantly different we can use that too we can use that um that will create that will basically then uh set up the structure no basically set up the structure so then this will set up the structure for our recall Has his knees. The recall section. Actually, someone asked me an, uh, a question earlier yesterday. I don't even know if they stayed for the answer or not. Usually people ask questions and they don't respond or make any additional commentary. So I figure they were either content or disappointed by it and then moved along, right? Oftentimes that happens. You kind of get used to it. Uh, so recall. So someone said if I took any notes. Like took any notes the other day. Uh, took any notes. This would be the notes. Uh, the notes would be referring to this stuff up here. And those notes are uh, temporary in the sense that uh, I write them every day. Right, I, or I write them during recall. So this recall will be actually also take place at the beginning of the day of day one in the following cycle. However, for now, this recall is what we take in. So I do day ones are very long, uh, effectively. Um, the more time I invest in establishing this is how I would recall the thing. And oftentimes this provides, um, as a side note, oftentimes this provides enough accuracy. Provides uh, uh, enough accuracy. And enough accuracy in the sense of both pronunciation, pronunciation, and writing that I can attach attach like the actual thing i'm reading like the meanings together properly i think uh there is which someone asked this multiple times um when it comes to pronunciation <clears throat> uh tips often have to be functional they're not um and oftentimes uh, when People offer, at least in my opinion, offer generalized tips and whatnot. It's more like generalized tips um, managing to promote accuracy as opposed to functional things. Like what I mean by this is um, when you are inundated and preoccupied with accuracy, it, those tips can become more of a distraction than being something pragmatic so i tend to try to regulate how much i'm taking in from other people's uh, perspective on pronunciation and obviously there are lots of p 
people out there that demonstrate how you pronounce things and whatnot, that's certainly great. Uh, I only take in as much as I can without it being a distraction. So the reason why I do that largely is because um, that feeling that people describe, in my opinion, comes from the symptom. It's a consequence of this, which is the idea like, oh, suddenly you're speaking to a native speaker and you become very nervous, right? You're incredibly preoccupied with the idea that the native speaker will find that your pronunciation and on your writing or your construction or your grammar on understanding is uh, not perfect or not accurate or the, the, the word that's missing, right? That I've written here is provide enough accuracy as in it is sufficient. So until I find the urge to say like, oh yeah, this is it. I want to master this. This is this is my life's blood. Um, the idea is being sufficient is enough. So if I am really curious what that general tip is now, but that person obviously didn't stay to answer the question much later, which is kind of the whole idea of not being sufficiently attentive. Attentive. However, um, what I typically would say is if I did something egregious, as in it is not discernible by someone who is obviously going to be interacting with me, then yes, um, that would drop below sufficiency. So it's not sufficient. However, when it comes to like my details, in my opinion, and I think a lot of individuals would find this a very compelling argument when you're thinking about like, oh, you sound pitchy or uh, here's the tip and here's that. And this is what you the shape you're doing. The idea is, though, is this sufficient for understanding? Because honestly, in my opinion, functionally, if you are already focusing on mastering something that you are learning and expecting that you start by mastering it, by worrying and consolidating a lot of things, then it can end up being more of a distraction. That's my only, that's my personal preference. I think other people would suggest like, well, if you want to do it right, you do it right from the start. I'm like, okay, well, that's fair enough. You go do that. Uh, I don't believe that is uh, something that is realistically maintained most of the time, especially for someone like me. So if I were always perfect in everything I do or try to always do the best things and consider all the factors, um, I would also dislike learning things like most of those people, right? Because I do it again and again and again. Meanwhile, somebody who picks up a language, they only want to do it once as in never again, right? So like, oh yeah, once I learn Japanese, it's done. I don't have to learn again, right? Uh, I do this all the time. So uh, I aim for sufficiency. I don't aim for like efficiency. That That's like an entirely different thing. So anyways, I imagine I've heard lots and lots of general tips at this point. It would be interesting if that general tip today was something perhaps new. Uh, it's been a very long time since I started language learning and I've been on for quite some time. So I've encountered lots and lots of tips. I don't necessarily think tips are, you know, counterproductive by any means. However, taking in a lot and trying to juggle a lot can very much distract you from being functional, right? It's kind of like uh, never starting to study when you're constantly reading how the best way to do something. So that's kind of my my two cents on that. So uh, as a side note, as a side note, uh, many, many, I think, feel 
they are doing me a favor by preventing something bad from happening. And I think the only badness that comes from being sufficiently communicating in language is how you, the person who's speaking, feels about the reaction you get, right? And I think actually a lot of times when it comes to interacting with people, the insecurities and the and the problems and the nervousness is self-created, not the other way. Because uh, logically speaking, if you're wondering, what does the native speaker or the person who is experienced have to be nervous about? And what is possibly obvious to you is probably obvious to them already. And if that person does in fact ridicule you and remove all doubt about your insecurities, then in my opinion, that person is someone one should not be interacting with in the first place. At least that is my, it would be what constitutes as the start of a very toxic, abusive relationship. So that's probably something I would avoid personally when that is the case, right? <clears throat> Anyways, so we got the recall. So now we bring all of that, whatever this story construct, weird way of connecting things. I absolutely love these things, by the way. Um, actually, one of my, as a side note, outside enrichment, right? My uh, si outside enrichment is, actually, Lotus, Lotus shared something really funny the other day about this guy's fascination with the word snail in Japanese. So my uh, outside thing, when I watch YouTube, for example, uh, YouTube and other people who speak who are multilingual um, I participate in watching videos that deal with idiosyncrasies uh, what is that um, like common behavior common behavior um uh passion like passionate passionate demonstrations of things so we're not talking about uh filling my time up with instructional material <clears throat> i know that might sound like uh something that is very beneficial uh, that uh, to me instructional material is fantastic for the target audience uh, so it's not instructional material I don't I'm not a person who would sit there and have someone uh, basically like didact uh, uh, provide me with instructions with like with tips basically like explicit like explicitly tell me things i i seek explicit information when that information is missing so i seek it i seek it when desired desired to fill in gaps, basically to fill in gaps, maybe. But this is uh, uh, occasional. This is very occasional. I solve problems when there are problems or when a problem is approached, right? If someone says, oh, I, I don't understand why you, when you say this, it doesn't make any sense, then I would seek an instructional material. However, other than that, my participation outside of Duolingo, which is every single waking hour outside of Duolingo, is I look and I watch things that are common behavior from multilingual people. So when they say like, oh, did you know that so-and-so says this or like there's a scene right like i, I really like uh, i forgot the guy's name but he always wears like a 
he, he has like jet white hair. Like, oh man, I forgot his channel. But uh, I'll ma mention in the future. But he, he, this is for Chi. This isn't for Chinese. He, he's a Japanese content creator. He always has like a uh, traditional clothing on, and he he talks about things like, oh yeah, you know, Shinjuku, uh, Shinjuku, Shinjuku is a maze, right? And then he talks about it and drops Japanese here and there. That's the that's kind of the idea. And that's how I interact with um, taking in more languages, like my target language, and applying them. Uh, when you when people describe things and talk about things in their like in their country or their lives within the context of a language. That is wonderful. It uh, gives me ideas that are relatable. When you're in an instructional YouTube, you're sitting there trying to abstractly um, separate yourself from that. And to me, um, I try to minimize that because it's not as engaging to me. And certainly, it works for a lot of people. Um, I think I have a habit of actually disagreeing with people's tips a lot of times. And what I mean by that is I would take their tips and I would modify it. So whenever someone provides a tip, like, oh, okay, I can see how that can help me. That kind of thing. But generally speaking, um, there it it's really fine not to have to perfectly do do something right so i really appreciate the tips generally they don't turn out to end up doing the thing that other people might just right anyways going back uh then we get into the second day uh so we take the second day so it's whatever this recall is, and we start the day with recall, right? We start the day with recall, and that involves outputting, outputting in writing, in writing and speak and speech, uh, whatever our construct was, right? Whatever our construct was. Uh, this is my rudimentary way of getting used to constructing things without necessarily constructing conversations. So at some point, one has to be comfortable in constructing. Um, any form of construction is more than zero construction. So, um, when you are not, uh, when you are not associating, when one is not forming associations on your own, and it's provided by, say, a dictionary or a mnemonic that's provided by something, it can work. It can definitely work. Uh, I personally prefer to get used to constructing on my own. Uh, Duolingo provides grouping in an implicit way, and then I add more to it. Um, the more a part of you is added to it, you internalize it, right? That's the whole internalization, right? So say like whatever your tool is, say a wonderful person, a wonderful stranger, or uh, let's say instruction instructor, which there are many instructors out there. I'm not so sure about Chinese though instructors out there who provide like tips right provide tips uh, or like a, a schedule or um, a story things that relate to things explainers right explainers um, what I would do in general which in terms of Duolingo, they provide the grouping schedules. Um, this recall is important because construction, in my opinion, provides internalization. 
internalization or like a, another fancy word I typically use is integration. Because while you're internalizing, you're also integrating it to your existing, to your existing knowledge pool. Like, how does this vocabulary relate to you? Right? How does this tip relate to you? Like, oh, oh, I see. Right? If someone says, oh, you know, you're, you, I, I notice you keep doing this thing. And uh, I don't think that's the accurate way. And then, or like that's you usually tips are very detached. They would say something like, oh, most people say this is the accurate way of doing it. I found that this is what the accurate way is doing it. I would take that tip and I'm like, I would think about it as like, hmm, how does that relate to me? Right? Is this whatever this person is describing able to describe what I'm doing? Right? And if I'm doing it, then I would understand the context of that tip. Like when someone says, oh, you know, you're pronouncing a specific sound without, I don't know, touching your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Meanwhile, you have to determine if you're not touching your tongue to the roof of your mouth, for example, right? You have to actually be able to integrate um, the tips. And I think uh, this part is something that involves construction. You can be told what to do. You can be explicitly, explicitly explained everything. Like you can read a textbook. It gives you all your grammar rule. And that just fall, that just leaks out of your brain and not become integrated or internalized. Because largely you have, in, in my opinion, contextualize it to you. This also goes with the idea, this has become a commentary thing, right? Uh, this has also uh, talked about the idea of uh, context. I assure you, context helps, right? Context helps a lot. However, context can also fail. When that context has no engagement. The idea is though, if the bottom is no context, then some context will evidently be more than zero content. The chances are it will be above zero. However, you know, you have someone, um, I use, I generally use like the movie going, movie going analogy. If you hate the movie and you're indifferent to the movie, it, well, not hate the movie. You actually remember things when you hate them because you're invested. That That is a form of engagement. If you're indifferent to something, uh, the context itself is not what is functional. Uh, the context is attempting to help you find integration, right? So not all content so context in as one might imagine not all context is uh, uh functional or like can be you can have lots and lots of context in fact you can have so much context that it blurs the line of what you're supposed to learn like imagine being overwhelmed uh, over being overwhelmed is a great example of too much context too much information at once right so here, Duolingo offers very little context. Like, in fact, very, the closest thing is you're trying to discern how they're grouping the things. And that's even more, in my opinion, than most Duolingo users. I, I'm going to go on a limb here and say, it's fairly conservative to say that when someone used Duolingo and they say, there's absolutely no context, then that is what I mean. Um, there is context. Probably not explicit enough for the people who want instructional material and have all the context provided for them. I would make a strong counter argument for those individuals. That strong context, if it's provided for you, 
you are less and less likely to internalize that context. And I think the conservative advice for myself is to encourage you or people that I engage with to create your own context. Take what is offered and make some of it part of you, right? Otherwise, it's very, very difficult to keep it down. Like, I, I earnestly believe there is a very minimal difference between context, indifference context, and rote memory. Because if that context, right? Oh, uh, sorry. I wrote moving going, movie going. If that context, right? If this context is not relatable or not like if you're indifferent, right? If you're different, indifferent to it, uh, in my opinion, rote memory comes into play again. So you are memorizing, you are brute force memorizing new contexts, new contexts that is not really your own. And to me, sometimes that actually makes things harder. So like cue the time when some like you hear like my my version or something. Like, oh, I remember I remember X. X by thinking of Y. Right. And then someone else comes along and says, wait a minute, uh, that doesn't make any sense. However, if I were presenting myself as an instructor or a or alternatively a more experienced person. You get the benefit of the doubt. benefit of the doubt that whatever your context is, whatever your context is, is uh, possibly more helpful. More helpful. Right? Because the idea is the person you're speaking to have zero context. So if you provide it at least some semblance of context, it is more than zero. I would argue sometimes it can drop below zero, as in it can be distracting. So when, in my opinion, I prefer to do the one thing that most people get advantage from the context, um, using your context to understand either yourself, like express yourself, or that person understands you better, right? So when I provide a context the way I think, I want to give it the incentive that it involves understanding something, me, perhaps. And that idea creates an engagement. It cre creates a, like a story, right? Um, that's largely why when I talk about engaging in YouTube, I'm engaged with these multilingual people. As in, I'm interested in what they have to say. And because of that interest, it is a compounding effect. The things they say stick because it's framed around a building of this person's uh, persona or whatever they're I'm trying to produce, right? It's not rote memory trying to remember separate mnemonics that don't belong to you. As in, oh man, you know, it, it's probably, and I, I probably hear this in people's internal monologue, at least in my opinion. Like, you know, it's just it's just easier to remember the word at this point because it's even harder to remember a story that doesn't even you can't even remember easily right mnemonics are supposed to lift the burden of using rote memory 
However, if you're using rote memory to remember a new story that's attached to the thing that you're already trying to remember, that's actually more resources. However, the long run is that you hope that whatever mnemonics you're internalizing becomes your own and then you can build on it. So yeah, there, there is a give or take. And for myself, uh, I, I do that. I invest early. So I invest, construct, take whatever Duolingo has to offer, try to figure out how it is because it's interesting. So when I figure out, oh, this is the organization and that's the organization, like why does this person sit around and talk about why Duolingo uses this and uses that? It's like, what, what's the point of that? Well, it engages me. And when it engages me, I understand how they're organizing the information. If I understand how they organize the information, then I can leverage that to my own advantage. I'm not learning without learning how it's supposed to work. Um, it's, it's something that I think other people choose to do. So a lot of times, and when they offer advice, it's often based on what they know and not what they're observing. So. I don't offer advice most of the time because I don't know what's going on in that noggin of the person who's speaking right to me. So I try my best as quickly as possible to try to understand as much as relevant information as I can about that person. However, if that person is unwilling to share or is unable to express it, the own the natural inclination or avenue of understanding a person is basically observation right by observation and that's where youtube comes in and that's where recording yourself sharing your journal and keeping track of things that's ultimately how i feel so when it comes to offering advice obviously the ones that have the most appropriate advice and and Ideas are the ones that probably have observed me long enough to understand it. Or, of course, a lot of times they might be passively participating. And that is more or less the same situation as taking tips, schedules, stories, and whatnot, and trying to remember them raw. Like, well, oh, wait. What movie, you know, what year did this movie come out? And then your rote memory, you're ta uh, tapping into your rote memory. Well, there is, there are other ways to remember the movie. Like for example, if the movie had a sequel, you can remember the year of the sequel. Know how long ago the sequel happened after the prequel, after the first one. And you would have two memories attached to each other because you watched the the year a mo new movie came, the first movie came out and then you waited for the second movie to come out a, a certain year ago that that's context that's using context leverage to more than one memory right it can be as in my opinion as rudimentary as something like that or very highly complex uh, that is a long digression about how I form and construct um, these little things, right? I think uh, this is the center. If I had any time to spend most of my time, if there is something I do that I feel is kind of a, it's kind of a hot take, a hot take, it would be creating recall creating recall on a daily basis and trying to enforce construction to internalize the things you need. I remember people's details. I remember people's names and, or if I don't remember your name, I remember some details that will elicit the name or vice versa. Um, I, much like I, I'm sure much like everyone else I hate to forget people right I hate to forget people's name and taking notes can 
most definitely alleviate that like recording things down absolutely and then there's also additional things you can use and train your memory right not everyone can constantly tick up notes and whatnot so i'm using a blend of that i'm not literally writing the notes and then sitting back and saying oh yeah if i forget something i still have my notes i'm not literally sitting back and say um oh i forgot this i'm going to put it on a flash card and uh i'll be reminded then with the flash card that is definitely helpful right now though i do not see a strong deficiency that requires me to do that yet I can see definitely in the future that I'm going to have to start writing certain things now. For now though, this is working out pretty well. The volume is pretty good. Duolingo moves at a pace that is not agreeable for most people. Because in my opinion, when they say they know something, they know it for the short term, long enough to say that they know it. And then a little bit later, they don't know it anymore. Um, or they don't remember it anymore. They definitely do know it. They even know that they have forgotten it, probably. And to me, without the link of context, uh, active constructing context, uh, sticking to notes, a dictionary, a translation device, a tool, that stuff will become um, your effective strategy. I'm not going to use the C word, which is what most people would say, which is a crutch, right? It would become a crutch. I actually think if one is really happy using a target language and cross-referencing dictionary, like I was talking to Baccio earlier, if they're, if you're really used to that and you find it comforting as in like, you don't find it, it hinders your manner of communicating, interacting with people by all means, it's sufficient. If it does get in the way, then problem solving comes through, right? Do I need pitch accent training uh, to be sufficient in Japanese? I'm not sure yet. I can earnestly tell you that the answer is likely no. However, if I have time and whatnot, it'll be pretty awesome. And in Chinese, will my tonality be so bad that is unintelligible i guess we'll find out right we'll find out uh one thing for sure is though um it sure as heck be way more memorable when someone interacts with me and suggests that as opposed to someone giving me advice that prevents something from happening or if it ever happens Right. That's kind of a hot take as well. Anyways, there you have it. It's a really important point. So I, I wanted to make sure this is the center. I, I think um, after, un, after 200 plus of language uh, learning, I think this activity here is arguably one of the most important and i think in the future which i'll maybe have i'll talk about most of it is going to be built around this it's going to be built around encouraging me to do this um when i stop learning this is all i do i do recall recall day in and day out i look at stuff i go outside during my break and like do a pull up and stuff I look at the equipment, I look at the table, I'm doing recall. I'm constructing things, um, creating sentences that I want to say in the future. So like uh, in English, for example, um, how do I say I want to go to Costco and buy a, a crap ton of food? Right? That's, that's kind of something, right? You can say something like Costco de... Oh no, wrong. <laughs> wrong language um you know what she uh what she costco my tons of dongxi right I, I don't know what how to express like super lots of stuff right 
that that kind of thing. Uh, 我想，我想去，我想去 Costco 买 lots of 东西 Still don't really know that kind of thing. It it's not embarrassing. It's not cringy. It's it, that's how you function, at least in my opinion. Uh, things aren't as cringy when you know the person is earnestly trying and doing things. At least in my opinion. Uh, if someone else finds that cringy, then in my, I I would. This sounds a little direct. I don't think they've tried, uh, tried learning things in their lives too often, because that's what it means to learn and try things. You're going to have incomplete knowledge. You're going to have, and you might as well embrace it and do do something functional about it. All right, and I do that all the time. Uh, my construction is not that great. My pitch accent is pitchy in Japanese. My tones are really pitchy in Chinese.、Uh, that's okay, right? You can most certainly try to、um, provide some sort of story to help me remember things that I've done. Otherwise. Tips have minimal impact if you don't understand the person's idiosyncrasies. Right. Okay.、Uh, where were we? So we do the recall, right? And then we go into the next one. So this is oh, I was gonna try to fit it into one screen, huh? Okay. So then we do the second lesson set, right? The second. I basically just combined what I was gonna say later into this. It's all good. So we do our second set, our second lesson set, and it is how Duolingo does it is a same pool. It's basically a similar or same pool. We're not gonna say same. It's actually not the same. It's a a similar, a similar pool of prompts as day one. So this is effectively a review now. So you're doing a review. It's a review lesson set, right?、Um, however, what's different this time for me is that it's not only a review; it's also a pickup, a pickup、uh, lesson set. As in the first pass. Uh, Duolingo actually has this habit of having incomplete, incomplete record keeping, right? Record keeping. And you might be thinking, "Ah,、oh, man, it would be so convenient if Duolingo had complete record keeping, right?"、Um, I say this、uh, really often.、Uh, not all like. Vocab like not like not all characters sometimes are are listed are listed and in fact in the Chinese portion there are no、uh, there are no、uh, vocab list in the desktop version in the Japanese version there is a vocab list only like thirty to forty percent of it is actually covered so no vocab list. So what do you have? Well, you have the Hanzi, Hanzi section. Hanzi section, which has all the vocab in there, technically, like most of the things that they want. And I've already created a recall construction out of it, right? So we've already done that. So we're already gone through that construction recall, and then we do the lesson set. And that lesson set will help me pick up, pick up anything that is missing. So it's not either anything that is noteworthy, noteworthy. So in this case, it's not something that Duolingo finds enough to record. It's now during the review. Of the less lesson, I spend time picking up anything else that's noteworthy, and this is、um, any errors that I made 
according to Duolingo, any grammar points, maybe um, uh, something, something that is shocking, noteworthy. Those are the things I pay attention to. And it's not, it's different from making sure it's not this. It's not focus on making sure you have 100% accuracy and knowing everything in it. The focus is anything that is noteworthy. So if it doesn't shock you, it doesn't elicit thought, if you're not engaged in the thing, generally speaking, it's probably not as important. And oftentimes a lot of heartache, I would say, a lot of like emotional distress and resources is dedicated to something that you're having a hard time remembering. Now, this is very different from if you don't remember anything, then you have to find something to remember, right? That, that's kind of the idea. However, if you already have a lot of things that you've learned from a lesson set, right? So basically, I've already done the recall. I've already done the recall. Those are like the stuff that I invested a lot in. Now, the second time I go into lesson set, it's picking up whatever I find that is interesting. It's extra. It's extra. The main core of all the stuff that is important to me is already established in day one. And then going into day two, I get reminded of whatever is important. And the thing, the second opportunity is the second pass of making note of anything that you find is really interesting because in my opinion, that's probably something you're going to remember or something I will be going to remember. And you might be thinking, but what if you drop something like, what if this is very important? Like someone would come in and say, oh, you shouldn't forget that. That is very important. Like, well, I forgot it. So it's clearly not important to me at the moment. The idea is you'll know that language learning is a very, very long process. The next time I go to the next resource, the next person I speak to, it might become important. The idea is you cannot, in my opinion, it is a fallacy and it is very emotionally draining to think that you have to capture all your information, no matter how simple or easy or hard. I get really concerned when people measure um, their aptitude and their potential by how hard and easy something is. Um, if Duolingo is very easy, then why can't you remember things in Duolingo? If things are hard, then why you have an easier chance of remembering it? So, no, I actually do not think there's a correlation between something that is easy and hard to the potential of the person remembering it. In my opinion, the vast majority of this, um, the ability to remember something and to like apply something is ultimately how invested you are and how engaged you are, right? So much like that, you take whatever that a tool has, this doesn't have to be Duolingo, and you, if you are already learning something and you're getting that information, getting, um, adding to that is extra, right? At some point, it will become important. It will create an impact when you didn't get something. Like, for example, someone asked me, oh, what if you keep pronouncing the word wrong and later uh, it becomes, it, you get reminded that it's wrong. It's like, well, then later I only have to work on that. If focusing on that right now prevents me and cripples me from everything else that's being worked on right now, then that's diminished return. So I'm personally, this is my personal 
opinions and anecdotes so um if this resonates with you give it a try i suppose i focus on the things that are important to me and that stay with me and engages me not the fact that they are hard or easy if it being hard and easy or you believing it's hard and easy helps you by all means utilize the placebo effect right utilize whatever effect you can to your advantage for me i don't care how hard or easy people think it is if it's not important to me it's very difficult to remember um i generate importance some uh, I can go back to like the first week or second week when someone says, dude, it's just a game. Why is, why do you make such a big deal when there isn't a meaning there? Or like, why do you treat Duolingo like it's more important than because that's how you remember things? Or at least that's how I remember things. So if I don't generate importance, why do I even bother learning it? I mean... It's crazy how I can be talking to someone and say, why are you even writing this comment? Like, dude, dude, chill out, man. Dude, chill out. I'm only, I'm not trying to be serious by writing this comment. Don't write the comment at all. Right, in, in my opinion. I right, not, not for my sake. You can write, you can spend all the time you want. I'm genuinely just curious. If this comment is not important to you, why are you writing it in the first place? It's obvious not important. The content itself, like the comment content itself, I understand. It's probably not important. However, the motivation to write that comment has some importance. At least I hope. From a rational and intellectual person, right? For me, I will write a comment. Whether it's serious or not, it is still important and meaningful. Because I spend time writing it. So when someone goes off and says like, oh, you know, I didn't mean anything by it. It's like, what, what do you mean you didn't mean anything by it? And that's kind of how I feel about some people who learn language or give advice or talk about how they study. Um, it feels like they're going through the ropes because that is what they've been told to do or that's what they're familiar with. And that works i i feel like by chance that works most of the time because there are plenty of brilliant people who have came up with plans to make it how you say uh dummy proof right dummy proof um i yeah, it's just not as interesting to me i think i'm past that point where um it's fun doing the things the same way i i don't find that very entertaining anymore um certainly i'll sacrifice efficiency for it however i wouldn't replace it anyways so i go through anything that's noteworthy like uh an error i made will stand out a lot so i'll make a note of it in my in my mind like i i'm not gonna write it down or anything or I'm going to write it at the end of something, right? Sometimes I write it at the end of the second day. So at the end of the second day, if something really terrible comes up, right? At the end of the day, right? I'll write down the extra stuff on screen. Not, not even save it. I'll write down the extra stuff, whatever that is. And anything that I have forgotten right i want to reinforce i want to so if i've forgotten something reinforce how do i reinforce that i add more context more context as in my personal context if i can't you'll hear me say something like oh well looks like i'm just gonna rote memory this and try 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 another day like i'm not gonna sit there and force the context you're gonna get diminished return as well so when i look at a character i'm like hmm nothing's coming to me we'll just have to wrote memory it for now maybe in the future right you can't plan 
this. In the future, you might learn something. You might learn something else. And then you can go back and do it. So there are a lot of things, lots of uh, characters, especially Hanzu. There are lots of characters. That I'm like, mm, all right, you know what? We'll just wait. I'll trust that I become more competent and see the connection in the future, right? Um, there's diminished return when you get stuck in a place and it stops you from moving forward. You, the person who has to get all the grammar rules correct before starting to learn vocabulary, for example. Or you, the person who needs to know all the hiragana and katakana in Japanese before they proceed to looking and listening to Japanese. It, it can all happen at once. Not for everyone. For myself, if I've forgotten something, I try my best to reinforce it. So this is meaning reinforce the context of my recall. So anything from my recall that I've forgotten. And then the additional stuff, right? If I forget some of it, it's perfectly all right. It's actually part of the part of the norm. Uh, in, in my opinion, if you're always actively learning something, eventually when you revisit something with new lens and new competence, that's why, in my opinion, I tend to go back to basics. I go back to basics, review. I like this is what I'm doing right now. I go back to basics, review. Make sure all my foundations are in place. Sometimes I even go down and do a recall. Uh, so this would be a rebuttal to a person that says, this is too easy. This is too hard. Or you already know this stuff. Why you go over it? Well, if you are a person who think you know something, and then when you go over it, you, nothing new happens. Totally understandable. That's probably a waste of time to you. When I go over something, I'm looking for how I could change and how my new vision and my new knowledge and experience apply to the basics again. As in, I don't see it as the same thing anymore. There's a difference between someone who started out and learned something and then they go back to see what they learned it, it, since day one. You are no longer the same person. I think I am no longer the same person. So I look for other things. Other people may not, which I've encountered many very competent people who find it incredibly boring or even more projecting their monotony by saying things like, well, you're not learning anything new. Like, does, does it look like I'm not learning anything new? Because I can earnestly tell you, I am I try to make it as obvious as possible. Even going back to something that I've done a hundred times, there's a chance I would find something new. Not to say that it's a effort most well spent or what have you generally speaking i go back because i'm always ready to teach something i go back and do things that are easy for me because i need to remind myself what it is that i used to have to learn because i like teaching i like providing advice from a teacher's perspective i'm not a person who says been there done that I'm beyond this. It's like, that's fair enough. A different prerogative, right? So anyways, um, most of this stuff I would say that I'm saying now deals with the fact that I spend most of my time doing this all the time. Uh, things that I think I know I do really, really well, I still do this. Um... If you ever watch me play video games, which, you know, feel free to watch my video game things at the beginning of each uh, day in a video game, I recall what I did the previous day and I point out the things that stick out the most and then point out the things I try to remember at the end of the day 
and at the end of a stream of a video game I try to summarize things or make notes and talk about what I have experienced. I do this pattern for pretty much everything. So um, this is not unique to Duolingo and I don't think it's going to end with Duolingo or language learning and what have you. It might not be for everyone. It's certainly the way I remember things. But anyways, and then journaling and all your classical things, which I, it's a topic for another day. Okay, so now that we got the second day, we wrote down, we reinforced. Then the third day, right, day three, yeah, we're going to end it with here. Maybe some future things. So then we get to day three, right? Day three, we do recall again. So this time the recall is extra stuff. Extra stuff, which I kind of forgot from my Japanese section today. Uh, extra stuff plus day one right so now we have day one uh, day two stuff and day one stuff put together do the recall again see if anything falls out etc and by this time i will be i will know more things that i have possibly forgotten forgotten in the sense of so like the idea that you have enough context to know something is missing. So in a way, you're not technically forgetting that you don't know something. You you know something. However, it, it doesn't the context you have doesn't get you to the thing, right? You know something that you have forgotten. Because there's so much other context around it. And that comes from constructing. Like, okay, uh, this is about sports. I'm pretty sure. And then you go around and you say like, okay, what sports do I know? Well, I know soccer, right? Titu Chou, right? And Dalan Chou. Do I know any... Dalan, Dalan Tio. Um, do I know any others? Like, well, no. However, sometimes you might forget something. It's like, well, there were at least two sports. I knew there were at least two sports, but I only know one of them right now. So the reason why that is important is largely because day three is even more review. In day three, you have a personalized practice. EP, personalized practice, which goes back a couple units actually, goes back a couple units, and that's usually three exercises, uh, three lessons. Um, this one, you have to picture. One has to picture doing this routine, and then you're leaving behind these units. However, you already done the recall your context and stuff so whenever you enter this personalized practice the moment you hit something it will generate a trigger in my opinion a trigger any vocabulary has a chance to trigger your recall so um you have this mesh work right this mesh work of all the vocabulary and uh, when you hit a personalized practice the moment one vocabulary comes up it's like, oh, it's this unit or it's this cluster of things. So that vocabulary, I can describe the words around that vocabulary. I might not remember what unit, possibly a specific unit that it came from or whatnot, but I know the general idea of all the vocabulary that surrounds that word. And you get three opportunities. Actually, usually they have um, three to five, maybe different units that are far that is quite far back different units combined and this is an opportunity to challenge your recall like what your constructs are your constructs how good your constructs are 
uh, set in place and it gives us minor it gives a minor opportunity to add something to it right however the personalized practice is always going to be there to some extent so i'm not going to add more to the construct it's something that you hope over time whether you know it or not the, all the important things to you you will remember all the important things all the less important things you won't remember unfortunately you might remember that you don't know you knew them at one point that's perfectly fine and then lastly you get into the half lesson set the half lesson set which is it takes day one the total of day one or day two because they're identical um, or they're similar and it has it so if there were six lessons in day one then there's three in this lesson set right and this is and then plus one trophy one plus trophy lesson which is another review so this is the last opportunity in which duolingo provides a way to maybe add more extra stuff or round out or uh, round out proofread so to speak proofread or edit your construct that you have and that's it like the construct ends oh i forgot about day two um i've got to add one remark about day two uh day two after you complete this lesson set uh there's still a kanji you or uh hanzi and kanji so hanzi section you still do the hanzi section for like 15 minutes you actually try to or at least i i try to get an exposure exposure to all the all the characters at least once all the new characters at least once so after the lesson set at least 15 minutes to expose to all the characters right the reason why that reminded me is because now at the end of these lessons i finish finish the hanza section so any exercise that they have I complete it complete whatever farm whatever complete set that they have right and that irons out the last opportunity to reinforce this construct that i have now with that said you have to imagine that this is already rolling so when after day three we complete the unit right we complete the unit and it goes back to day one, which now the new day one has a recall as well. So what is the recall? The recall is what you can, what the construct here, and it's carried for another three days. It's carried for another three days. So while I'm repeating the sequence, right, for the new units, um, the recall that I've constructed for day three gets reiterated another three days. So now every recall session at the beginning includes two units of stuff. I chose two units of stuff because the, how the timetable works, by the time I do this review, like, this 50-day uh, review, right? This 50-day review. I'm reasonably okay. Originally, it was 25 days. And I found it was fine. Uh, the time is fine. And then 50 days, it's okay, I'm going to say. It's okay. It's still, it's rougher. The idea is that I'm trying to come up with e in enough distance and time that I still stay okay, like fairly accurate, right? Or quote unquote, sufficiently accurate, as in I'm okay with it. It doesn't interfere. So I'm like remembering a lot of things. So now I'm sticking with every 50 days. 
So is six days, so three days of heavy, three days of really heavy dedicated um, engagement to retain and then three days of active recall. And then the rest of the time is Duolingo. Duolingo actually touches upon more than those units every once in a while. And before it used to be what? It's six days and then it leaves 19 days before the review. And that used to, that used to be fine. And since it's fine, I wanted to extend it to 50 days. Now, I could end up changing my mind. Uh, what I did differently now is that when approaching, approaching 50 days, when approaching 50 days, I do a review. I spend, so for this specific thing that I did, I spent five days. I took five days and reviewed the last 14 units. And what took me, what took me, so 14 units, right? It would take three days for each unit. So what took me to establish for 50, uh, no, not 50, uh, 42 days. It took me five days, uh, five days to do. So that shrinks down how much I have to remember because I didn't have to remember much. Um, I get one or two things and the rest falls into place as in my constructs still stayed in place. So whenever like I go back and like, oh, I don't even remember what I did. Like I look at the unit, you know, I go to the Hanza section. I go to the Hanza section. I look at the first couple characters and then the rest just falls into place. Like 80 to 90% of the stuff falls back into place because any part of the construct can trigger the rest. So that is why I decided that 50 days is fairly safe before I take a midterm exam or something. And what does this sound like? It sounds like school. I mean, doesn't it? It sounds like school. When do you usually get your midterm exams or, or final? It's usually midterms. Um, about a month and a half is your midterm exam and then another month and a half is your final exam and meanwhile while you're doing that in the meantime you're constantly like trying to engage yourself as frequently as possible microdosing as much on taking in new information iterating on the new information making sure it's integrated internalized and then move along right and the idea behind this is not to end up doing a mind dump like when you probably when a lot of people were in school they did a mind dump where you legitimately cram all the things in and you told yourself in my opinion you told yourself oh i aced the exam now i'm just gonna forget all the other forget all of it and that's perfectly usable and passable when you don't actually need to use that information anymore uh language learning I, I would make an argument that it's also true for your school assignments. However, earlier on in school, it's more of a generalized approach. So there are disciplines you don't need any, like you don't necessarily need the nuances of, like for example, if you don't go into mathematics, mathematics is optional. In language learning, the foundations are not optional, right? They're building blocks, they're natural building blocks. So if you're choosing to go in language learning, that's it. And I would argue as a science person, um, you don't dump biology and chemistry and thinking that you go into molecular biology and biochemistry and like other disciplines thinking that all the other things are optional. So for those people, those things have become foundation. They get reiterated, they get revisited. In, in fact, I was one of the people that like low key, um, in the interest of time, I love the idea of college prep. That's provided if you 
internalized all that information, not pass all that information. So when I see college, like college bound students these days, they talk about, oh yeah, you know, I'm learning this class. It gives me college credit. So I don't have to take it in college. Okay. All right. Do you understand the stuff? Because the idea is that college prep course is going to be your only source of reinforcement. So if you pass that college prep course, it is understood that you internalize that so that you don't struggle later. And I think for the most part, those who are very apt to applied in their college prep, they do actually retain most of it. For those other individuals who say like, oh, you know, like, uh, it's great that I don't have to take this course again in college. I was not one of those. I actually took the course again in college because I know that I know more now. And if I go over the fundamentals, those things mean more to me. And it was absolutely priceless how valuable that. So I still continue to do that today. Every once in a while, I pick up a book, humble myself to the lack of understanding of fundamentals again, and participate in learning again, right? How often I, I like to like briefly, since we're at kind of at the end of this thing, this is the schedule, by the way, this is what I do every single time. It's not describing the literal details. So this does not describe what I actually do. Like what I mean is, oh, did I write a note? Did I make a like what kind of stories did I use or what kind of tips or pronunciation or what what kind of tricks and tip no, I'm not giving any tips and tricks and in fact I actually think those things without a foundation of wanting to learn and a foundation of actually creating your own things uh I in my opinion is irrelevant how much tips and pro tricks and stuff you have uh not being able to retain them and make use of them is paramount to making any advice valuable right i could sit here and talk about literally what i do every day instead of actually literally doing it so the reason why i prefer to live stream things unedited is largely because if you want the actual details of what i do every day you actually have to watch me do it every day because there's no possible way I'm going to summarize that this however this here is how I feel I could summarize something without providing any specific details because those details will most definitely and unequivocally vary so extraordinarily between people I don't I disagree strongly sometimes and may maybe I'm not well educated or experienced enough but I ever suggesting I am so apprehensive when people suggest that they have decoded or somehow uh, predict you know somehow created the golden standard in which somehow human subjectivity has been reduced to something objective enough that if you do it, everyone will be successful. Let's just thinking about that and looking at the reality of things. I don't think anyone can claim that. And if someone does respectfully, so if they do and, and they have lots of credibility, I find that really hard to believe. Perhaps there is someone out there who thinks that um, they're incredibly well educated and credible and know, understand the how individual variability works and all that. And they still come up with a lesson plan or something that works for everyone. Well, my thought is I'm le le lesson learning now and everyone's arguing about what's the best way to learn something. So. If someone comes to me and say they know the best way, obviously that's not true, right? At least I hope. 
when something is truly and un unequivocally the best way, then I would naturally think that it would be a very, very strong positive selection for it. There are a lot of strategies that have lots of positive selections. There are also competing ones. And whether it's like a popularity contest or not, or what have you, they coexist. So in some way, those popular competing strategies have some perceptible, you know, perceivable success. And I think it does a discredit. It discredits the person, especially if the person is a professional, and it discredits anyone's credibility to suggest something that is not the reality. Uh, so I don't, in my opinion, go around and say, whatever I'm doing now on, on this slide is um, the gold standard in how one should construct a generalized plan to encourage oneself to use whatever tools that work and have a positive feedback like do do a create a positive feedback and it can work for everyone there's no way and i say this so often there's no way this can be something special that works for everyone uh there's i almost feel like there are hundreds of years there there are multiple generations of people that have worked on trying to teach and educate and somehow now arbitrarily is the time where there's a gold standard that works for everyone that's difficult for me to imagine however however i would totally love to be humbled and served you know hubris you know serve like be humbled in the sense of being convinced that i am wrong about the idea that there uh, about the idea that there isn't a universal standard to learning yet right yet i'm constantly open to the idea that there is a potential chance it's not now i don't think so so um i think before someone comes uh, who thinks that they find credibility in name dropping and saying how well read they are the idea is overselling oh hyperbolic phrases uh, in language i don't really it doesn't have to be in chinese or japanese or english when you use hyperbolic language like that it to me personally it might be convincing to someone else who's like desperate and uncertain and confused and potentially young and inexperienced to me that means that you lose all credibility like it is seldomly ever foreseeable that someone who is intelligent incredibly intelligent experienced and have a wide perspective would be ever comfortable in suggesting and walking around and suggesting that whatever they do is a universal truth it's it's crazy um so take this with a grain of salt whatever is on screen now is my current working model of what i do uh skill development wise period um this is the current working model not in a, not in the most detailed sense because it's still being worked on for language learning however the general skeleton of this idea or this thing is maybe your uh, if you go to a job the yearly evaluation this is it you scale it up to uh uh, to one year you break up so all the specifics the times right the only thing specific here is the number of units the number of days that's it it's like days and a number of units 
um, those things scale. Everything else don't have specifics. Like, how long should you spend constructing your your context? How long is how much is extra stuff? How much extra stuff is too much? How much extra stuff is too little? What happens when you have forgotten too much? What do you do then? All these things do come up when they come up. So far, it hasn't come up. So I'm going to eventually continue to push to a point where I notice them and get back to my sub in another 50 days. I noticed this in Shashinko. There's, you know, troubleshooting. There's only so much that a method works. And eventually, you know, I'll pull up Anki. I'll pull up Anki, throw on some flashcards. Um, there will be other ways to rotate around. Uh, most of my basic skeleton starts with this. Uh, it, it lists it's a great form of time management, understanding uh, how to read yourself while also taking input. So it's balanced input, consistent input, makes things consistent enough so that it's not a negative thing. Uh, that's my, some of my priorities. So some of my priorities are consistency. This provides enough consistency for me to continue doing it. And um, it provides an output in which I can gauge my own competence on a regular basis. Because if you don't have a boss or a teacher or someone you're paying to keep you in line, then you have to keep yourself in line. In my opinion, you can trust the process and say input, input all day. But then when you output, that's when you know or somebody will know. So um, I think there are people who say, oh, I've done all inputs. And then they start telling me about their advice and what they did. Um, all to me, it sounds like a bunch of gibberish most of the time that have no real reflection. In my opinion, it's like they didn't even use time, which is perfectly reasonable. If you become fluent in Japanese without ever having to reflect upon your strategies, then it worked for you, regardless of the regardless of the process. The details of the process is irrelevant to you. The ends justify the means. You produce the results. The difference here is if you go and talk to me about your results, it will sound like gibberish. It will sound like I don't understand how you got to from point A to point B. Because every time you say you never spoke, you never thought in Sp uh, Japanese, for example, you never thought in Chinese before you went to China, it's like, that is absolutely absurd. Because when you're inputting something, you're thinking something in related to, ja to Chinese or to your target language, right? That's like saying you decided to mind meld or something without even comprehending that you're listening to Chinese somehow. That's what I mean by not doing output. So you have no idea how to explain and connect an input, what you're doing with an output. Uh, without that connection, explaining it to someone, illustrating and demonstrating it to someone, writing this stuff on screen. And this is still really or disorganized. I'm kind of... This is the second time around. Actually, it's kind of like the sixth attempt now. It's kind of organized. Um, without doing this, I don't care how much input I work on. Without a semblance of output, you cannot make these modifications. You are trusting someone else to make all the modifications for you, have done all the legwork, and you hope that somehow the stars align and everything works out. Or it works out reasonably enough that you yourself will begin to do it yourself. Intuitively, hopefully, right? That's what people like. They want to do it all intuitively. I actually think this part is probably one of my most, most engaging parts in language, in learning in general. And that's modifying your own strategies, finding out what works for you, tweaking it and whatnot this part is the extra part 
I think、uh, this part will keep me going in language learning more than the language itself, actually. Because, in my opinion, learning is the most fun part as a human being.、Um, you know, unpopular opinion, possibly, might not be relatable to other people. For myself, learning is the most fun part. Learning how to learn is even crazier than that. So, one day, If I go and learn something else, you know, I ditch language learning behind because I don't know, people get so angry at me, and someone tells me that I should stop spreading like bad, bad news bears and I need to seg segregate from it. Fair enough. I'll probably go back to like a video game or something or learn something else, and I'll more or less write the same thing again about that because I like expressing this stuff. This stuff is useful to me in a sense to illustrate that、um, being prescribed something is a great starting place. It's a very decent starting place.、Um, it is rarely ever a finished product, in my opinion. So, When I see someone's beautiful work and stuff, and it works really well for them, I ask myself, what part of their hard work can help me? And if it does, in fact, work really well and help me elevate my things, I like to show my appreciation, right? I make sure that I understand, hey, you know, I go back, support them, right? Even if it's indirect or anything, that's kind of how you find appreci、uh, appreciation for other people's advice without necessarily saying, oh, your advice is the best, and vice versa, right?、Um, I would love to see other people explain how they do their thing. Like, how do you go about doing this thing? That would be really incredible. The more, the merrier. In my opinion, because in the future, it feels like everyone already normalized being data dumped and being info dumped all the time. That's practically the social norm. So here's my info dump, I suppose. I honestly think、uh, I'm somewhat satisfied with what I said today about. I think I made most of my points that I wanted to highlight. Yeah. Most of my points that I want to highlight. In the future, it'll improve. Like, I'll do this the next 50 days. You know. See you guys in the next 50 days. If not in the Japanese one, it'll be in the Chinese one. And we might not have a dual. Actually, we'll still have a dual lingo background because、uh, I've already been asked this、um, and calculated. It, it's going to be another. It's going to be over half a year still before we're. I am satiated or have some kind of completion point for Duolingo. So, with all that said, let's add one last thing to talk about、uh, to close off the day, right?、Um, what can I close off the day for? Oh, let's do something kind of fun, like frequently asked questions, right? FAQs. I think FAQs are. Kind of a fun place to digress on. So,、uh, things I touched upon today, and maybe a little bit more common commentary.、Um, do do I get、uh, do I get Japanese right? Japanese and Chinese、uh, confused, <clears throat> right? Right. And I think if I try to be as this is like the lightning round, we're gonna call it the lightning round. So I'm gonna be more concise because it's very、uh, content consumption friendly. So do I get Japanese and Chinese confused?、Um, the short answer, the short answer uh, is uh, no. Right? It's it's no. Um, and the one thing I want to highlight that is probably going to be a little bit different. So, 
rather than stating rather than stating the obvious which um we'll go quickly um there is enough difference most people will say confusion is because they're similar there's enough differences differences between japanese and chinese where you can consistently not get them right on face value consistently not confuse them it's as confusing as if you heard a if you heard a word that sounds suspiciously like english or suspicious, uh, uh, suspiciously like your target language and then you got them confused that that's about as close as it gets and then when you think about it it's consistently not confusing right as a language learner probably begin to discern that now one thing that i want to add that may be a little bit interesting as a different take right we're going to be like edgy about this a little bit an edgy response is um uh to me japanese and chinese are one so when people ask confused they often in my opinion attempt to keep them separated so you focus on differentiating them most of the time because like oh man they're too similar i'm gonna get them confused and oftentimes i treat them as one uh as one thing so what does that mean well if i learn something in japanese and it reminds me of something in chinese then both of them both of them are quote unquote easier to remember when i remember something that is different let's say they are different then it's still easier to remember in fact that's probably what what is easier for most people because they're looking for separation right so the less common thing is if there's something similar between japanese and chinese it's actually easier to remember for me um i don't usually stop and decide like oh no i just suddenly thought about japanese while reading chinese it goes back to the only think in one language thing only think in one language thing this is unpopular opinion i'm sure some years down the line uh, whoever like some expert or something is gonna get angry at me at this point but only think in one language only think one language is uh not not my not my normal state i don't typically think of things that way i or or better yet better yet i could make a consensus i think think of language languages as one language it's the language that i speak so in a way if i don't know the japanese word then i'll use the chinese if i don't know the japanese or chinese word i use the english word when I learn something in Japanese, if it's related to Chinese, then I either remember both or see them as both or see whichever one's convenient, right? And oftentimes the reason why this advice was only thinking one language is often people are thinking about acquiring a language as fast as possible, which is fine, as fast as possible. Right, as fast as possible. And that makes sense. If you only think of the one language, you're spending all your time in that one language. So you acquire the language as fast as possible, provided you're engaged and all that stuff, right? 
uh, when I'm only thinking in one language, uh, the emotional stress or like some other stress or the lack of perspective or interest kind of wanes a lot. Um, I think Japanese is incredibly wonderful and Chinese is incredibly wonderful is because I know English. And Japanese is interesting is because I know Chinese. Japan Chinese is interesting is because I know Japanese. That's what I mean by uh, I think of language as one language as opposed to only thinking one language. Like some people, and I, I would actually say most people around me um, up to this point, they'll think of it that way. It's like, oh, Japanese is interesting. It's a shame my native language isn't that interesting. Right? Or, uh, man, I should really discourage myself to, um, from using my lesser, my lesser interesting language and only invest in the in language that I'm interested in. That kind of thing. And that works. I, I'm gonna, like, I'm conceding that it works really well. Uh, I am willing to sacrifice, uh, I guess, the crutch, the crutch of translating all the time. Because I love talking about Japanese and English. In English. I love talking about Chinese using English. I love talking about Japanese using Chinese. And I hope one day I can do that without using English or like choosing not to use English. Or go back and forth and use both. And right now, I'm kind of using both. Like, when I talk about a vocabulary word in Japanese, I talk about the Chinese one with the English because I can't express that yet in Chinese. But one day, I'll be able to express in Chinese. So one day, I'm just going to choose, hey, I'm going to talk about Japanese and Chinese, and then I'm going to talk about Chinese and Japanese. Perfectly all right. I'm building towards that. Uh, I have no goals of trying to play favorites and uh, try to play favorites with that. Um, admittedly, it will make everything pretty mediocre or more mediocre than someone who only focuses on uh, their language of choice. You know, you know what the irony of that is? Focus on target language. Uh, I think it there's something to be said about this about this kind of thought like do I get Japanese or Chinese confused and stuff it's really weird that one participates in acquiring another language acquiring another language and continues to think think and behave and do things like they're monolingual. That that's at least in my opinion. Like I think there's some sort of cognitive dissonance there where your attempt is to constantly always think in one language and somehow that normalizes the idea that you think in, you're going to think and speak in multiple languages or use multiple languages. I think that there's a paradox there. The iron, you know, a lot of times people get angry at me for saying, oh, yeah, you're not listening to native content. You have to actually do it in order to get used to it. And like, I agree. I don't, I'm not very good at native content. I don't sound native because I haven't listened to it. Now the irony, the thing is, those would be, in my opinion, the same people who say, oh, you must immerse yourself in one language in order to acquire that one language. Like, oh, okay, that's cool too. Um, and like, it's the only way to enjoy language and acquire language. It's like, no, I disagree. Absolutely disagree. In fact, I actually feel like instead of having to concern myself with what do I do when I speak two languages or what do I do when I start thinking in three languages or four languages anytime someone talks to me not in my target language or my native language that 
is what I want to normalize. So yes, I could most definitely get a half start treating my target language like I'm monolingual, or I can continue to embrace the idea that I'm multilingual and work actively and use that to my advantage as opposed to constantly asking, oh yeah, yeah, you know what? Let's just stick to thinking in one language at a time. Like, I, I, I'm okay. Like, that works. That works. Provided you make it. Um, I think, personally, my journey has taught me that Chinese and Japanese, ooh-wee, they are synergistic. <laughs> they are incredibly synergistic. And I now understand in my opinion for myself why i gravitated towards japanese and looking at the characters and like even if i don't understand anything i wasn't making an active attempt and then having it relate to chinese it's it's writing itself out so explaining what what my fascination is with japanese and chinese most of my life right so and english because I speak English. So if I really, really love Japanese and Chinese, I mean, at some point my English would have fell by the wayside. But I'm clearly still phenomenally enthusiastic using my English, right? In fact, the running joke right now is that my English sucks. You know what's worse, in my opinion, um, when I'm saying all this? My English is sucky. You know what's most confusing about learning Japanese and Chinese? English. Like, if there's anything that's confusing is uh, going from Japanese and Chinese to English. So the, the question that I would concede is, if someone asked me, do you ever get the, did you ever get the translation? Did, do you ever get your English mixed up? When when talking about Japanese and Chinese, the answer is yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Why am I smiling? Because uh, confusion, another, another, another challenge, another challenge. We'll find out how to negotiate that. Right now, I think one of the biggest uphill, uh, uphill fun things to talk about is how am I building, how am I building my English understanding around these having to learn these two languages right like imposing myself on this language how am i negotiating making my english sucky like when i read chinese my english reads differently than my japanese right obviously because there's maybe some loss in translation or something you, you start to get to get the idea that oh yeah hmm that's interesting I mean, you could attempt to treat Japanese and Chinese the same and make your English, normalize your English to them. That's that's something interesting that I haven't attempted. Right now, when I read Chinese, my English is different. When I read Japanese, my English is different. So what's happening is that my I, I'm kind of mixing them up a, a lot of times. Um, like, oh, this means... Oh, this phrase. Okay, how do you say this in English? This phrase means the day before yesterday. And then you read the Chinese like that is tomorrow morning, the day after. That's where it gets crazy. However, you don't get the, uh, in my opinion, I don't get the Japanese and Chinese mixed up. Like, if you read Japanese, it's Japanese. When you read Chinese, it's Chinese. Uh, in my opinion, that sounds very reductive. The idea is, um, I think the translating part is the part that gets confusing. And maybe that's what people are referring to. Um, so I'm trying to be as fair as possible. Maybe that is the confusion. So if that is the confusion you're asking, which I've had several people already asked if that's what you're referring to then the answer is yes i do get them confused when i'm using english and that's cool because that's funny i i actually think that means english it's more it's like very interesting now so 
that's that's probably the bigger question that i have i'll do one more question before before the day um the other question that i get a lot and it, it it's still the same question because um i don't know what is it about duolingo maybe it's about anything i haven't talked to another person who like streams something else as often as i do and talk about learning itself as opposed to using the product um uh, this question still is number one without a doubt this question is still number one do i only use the thing the thing the person only sees the reason why i say this uh this way is because it can vary it can vary and usually it'd be like, do I only use Duolingo, right? Do I only use, do I only use Duolingo? Or do I only use Duolingo and Shashinko, for example? Because it's the only thing that's available, right? That's the only thing I'm recording. Um, and I think this is a very important question. It is an incredible important question. And I'm not going to brush over this it's a very when someone ask ask me that it can go many different ways right um however there are two classical paths this goes towards either the person okay there are three paths there are three paths the person wants there, uh, I think there are three obvious ones. Uh, it starts with figuring out what the person is. So either the person does something different. The person does something different. Right? Different. And this excludes... This excludes Duolingo. Oh, I can think of a lot of different examples, but we'll, we'll go over some of the um, more consistent ones. So this person does something different and excludes Duolingo. So the idea is um, they're either looking for me to potentially mention that other thing, mention that other thing, other thing, or refute, refute the value of only using Duolingo right that that's probably easily number one um the other one is a person which i i feel is more often now because i've been doing this for a while or a reasonable amount of time and is a person genuinely looking for um a starting point that's the other common uh looking for a starting point so they would ask if i'm only using because they want to know if perhaps i don't even know how they would know this but they could get somewhere i don't know where that is get somewhere that sounds like me with what they see perhaps like a, a reassurance thing, like something that is encouraging. And I really love that. It, it's become uh, what they like, uh, what they want potentially, something desirable. And I kind of like that. It, it, this is a new development because of the time I've invested. Oh, that's off screen. Um, and what I mean by that is, I, I know this is a little bit self-complimentary but I, I i find it incredibly i'm internally grateful if this is on point the idea is i use duolingo for a very long time i guess to a lot of people for a very long time and it seems like i'm having fun 
right i'm having fun i didn't like stop it didn't get negative i didn't feel bored and whatnot and maybe some of these people are asking um if i'm only using duolingo maybe i could do that for so long and have fun with it right and most of the time if i have any inclination this is the point i usually raise a lot of uh, raise a lot of um grounded realism and my first comment often is something like i actually trust more that it's an earnest question than a setup for ref refuting so most of the time i would say something like oh you know if you're starting something duolingo has a low barrier of entry while it has a low barrier of entry it also asks a lot of investment from the person using it because it's a lot of hand holding so when you have to get used to it not holding your hand anymore so hopefully when you use duolingo you are inspired to figure out what else that you need or what else that you want and start to integrate other tools into it right so that to me is trying to resonate with someone who's looking for some sort of encouraging starting point on having a fun and engaging relationship with language learning. So those are the genuine ones that I've encountered multiple times. And it's a wonderful. Now, I have to say, though, this, the previous norm for this is I have no idea what I'm talking about. I have no idea what I'm talking about. So what I mean is um, no idea what I'm doing. So the previous norm that re this replaced because I had zero credibility, right? Credibility is often built by the time investment or some irre irrefutable evidence of demonstrating that I've had a lot of experience, whether it markedly increases my credibility or not. So earlier on, this was not the case. The most common thing was someone asking, do you only use Duolingo? And they are asking because I, they think that I have no idea what I'm doing. And earnestly, that's true. Because I just started. That That's a very obviously rational thing. At the same time, um, what they, what these people don't understand, in my opinion, or can't predict, even though they insist that they can, is that I will be unsuccessful starting with Duolingo. Or whatever unsuccessful means to them. Um... In fact, I might still be unsuccessful when I talk to other people. Because the idea is their interpretation is that, oh, no matter what, they're not going to become fluent, right? At least not fluent up to my standards. So they're going to fail no matter what. And it's easier to pick on someone who just started. That was the norm you're doing it wrong now it's less that it, it's become less that now it's genuinely i have met quite a lot of people that i really do wish i could tell them that if you continue using duolingo you don't have to work hard to learn a language or like you don't they don't have to perceive effort to learn the language but that I, I would be lying that would be selling like snake oil Right. Um, what I can offer a lot of times and as compassionately as I can is to, hey, if you're using Duolingo and you want to start using Duolingo, tell me about it. You know, share your experience. Talk to other people while using Duolingo. Engage with other people using Duolingo and ask them what else do they do. Right. It's an open step towards integrating more things. So not only does the question, do I only use the thing the person only sees, the answer is no. Generally speaking, I would say if you're hoping to ask someone for advice and you're asking someone who you think might be credible, when you say things like only use, only do within the frame, 
always the best. This is the only thing you need to do ever. That, to me, is someone who's not necessarily credibly motivated for compassion. They are more selling something. So for me, the answer is generally no. It's, it's never within the frame. Like, you forgot sleeping. I sleep. I, I joke about this, but I'm really serious. Um, if you want to learn language, you also have to sleep. If you're getting terrible sleep, dude, your study sessions are going to be absolutely abhorrent. It is going to eat through your study session. So if you're not eating well, you're not sleeping well, that is fundamental. Um, actually, I almost want to say, if you want to learn a language, I hope you're eating and sleeping well first before you start learning a language it can go a long way not that learning a language might not there there is a chance that learning a language might help you sleep better and eat better because you'll feel better about yourself the odds are though the highly realistic odds is taking on more task when you are not doing something other than the task that's available that can be tough Unless you're literally cooking in a fitness and a dietitian online, like a professionally trained dietitian, then yes, those are the exception. But for me, the answer is no. I, I don't only use Duolingo. In fact, it is incomprehensible. No, no, let them cook. <laughs> um, it is incomprehensible for um, me to empathize with someone who consider that that's a possibility and i don't want to give people the impression that's the possibility I, right? in no way and i still get this a lot like the earlier days when i was starting out the all the people who think i have no idea what i'm doing the first thing they tell me is you're only using duolingo it's like no i'm i'm still not only using duolingo i'm using my brain i'm using my context i'm using my experience I'm using my college education, my graduating. I'm not only using Duolingo. That, that is so weird to say from a from an ex intellectual, like a self-proclaimed intellectual. The first thing they say is, oh, your prior experiences don't have any impact on how you use the tool or use resources. That's a personal bias of mine. I don't want people to think that either. In fact, it was very disheartening that uh, it, it was very disheartening that some very well-educated people or foreseeable, foreseeably very well-educated people have reduced things to that. Um, learning is far more dynamic than a, a single tool, like a, a single thing or any single thing. So expecting someone to be successful by doing one thing is is absurd I feel like saying like for example you can become Albert Einstein by only studying physics I, I at least I hope that I didn't just make a really really terrible generalization but I I would like to say Albert Einstein knew more than physics right and they probably use more than one source to learn things and whatnot so Besides the point, I, unfortunately, I can't really, the thing that I love to encourage nowadays is that I kept using Duolingo because Duolingo keeps reminding me of many things I could be doing and other things I could be doing and how to improve and how to do that. It's a source of inspiration. Um, it is most definitely not the only. And I actually think that to me, if I can encourage people to start with Duolingo and approach it that way, they will end up doing something way different than me. And it starts with Duolingo. That, that's the idea. It starts with Shashinko. It, it, it could start with Shashinko. It doesn't matter what you start with, really. Uh, now, these are the most two common routes. Uh, for the people who do something different, 
usually um, when someone says, oh, oh, you know, I'm just curious. And I'm like, oh, hey, what do you do? Like, can you explain to me how you're going about it? Like, are you interested in language learning? Um, if so, what are you using? And generally, I would say 80% of the time, it's excluding Duolingo. And I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then, but my, the way I approach explaining how I don't only use Duolingo circumvents the thing that a lot of people were waiting to do. So some people would say things like, oh, okay, that's fairly reasonable. Like, okay, I agree with that. Like, there is a subtextual uh, giveaways that suggested that if I said I only use Duolingo, they either leave immediately and don't stay for the rest of the response, which happens very often um, before, because I was telling the truth. I at, at the beginning, I only use Duolingo. There, there's that's that's how you start. So they leave or they tell me that I have no idea what I'm doing. So it goes back to this again. So those are those two types of people in the beginning. Most of the type of people are the you have no idea what you're doing. I know better internet commentary, right? Like people don't start. They they start at 100. They are born heroes. They're born experts before they start to learn. Because generally speaking, anyone who goes out of their way to try to find affirmation, they really do be going out of their way to be picking low hanging fruit. So that's my commentary on the history of this question. No longer is a source of grievance though, or like source of intellectual, the social experiment has changed dramatically now. Now, uh, I, I want to like, I so want to provide answers, but at the same time, there aren't really short answers, right? It would be really cool if I did discover that, hey, using Duolingo is fine and all, but obviously I didn't, right? And uh, Shashinko isn't even the only other thing. And it also breathes into a longer, longer commentary on I'm happy in either way that the people that I meet know that there is a possibility of something happening outside of what they see online. I think uh, the side note here is I like the idea that people understand that there is more. There may be, there may be more than what is behind, than what, what is behind the frame. But let's be very clear here. I don't have edited comment. I don't have edited content. So this is even less than this. So when some person, which happened recently, when some person saw me read something incorrectly for the first time and then called me a moron, um, I hope that you live a life where you don't ever do anything incorrectly and make human errors because boy howdy. Either you survive long enough to exclude yourself from any error or you don't understand what it's like to be human. So um, this is what I mean by in frame. So if content is edited, you don't make any errors, right? If you don't ever see any errors, you certainly don't ever make any errors. And there are people who make this comment. And what's even worse is if it's not the first and only time, somehow, if you don't see anything, it's everyone and no one. Case in point, I have a comment. So like it, it goes along the lines with only, only 
every no one um there was a comment being made that someone talked about like slay the spire right during a recent game that i played and then someone else made a commentary and said oh yeah but you know every heckin card player says something about slay the spire even, even though it doesn't have it that that's not true that, that is, like not only that that person made a comment on a video of mine that explained how the deck building genre is cut classified by more than slay the spire so what why how is that relevant is because sometimes if you don't see it it's clearly not true or you only see it the way you want to see it if you didn't see it yet so it's even more extreme than that there are times when people ask what it is when it's already there so for example my most latest comment was someone asked what the heck is this and it was my review video for the Japanese section and my first inclination is I if only I happen to have summarized or tried to summarize in the very beginning what it is I still answer the question obviously I still answer the question because it's probably someone who's very young I'm going to say 14, 15 is judging by the this is a bit of profiling but the I need to work on something right like I need to work with something so this person has a presence and probably that comment is they looked at the thumbnail and they were asking what it is when it in fact the video has explained that in, in, in fact the video spends like six to eight hours saying nearly showing what it is right nowadays what's in the frame what's out of sight out of mind constitutes as a condition that exists or doesn't exist right and usually though the answer is yeah humans do a lot more than it can possibly capture unless there is a human out there that is willing to capture 24 7 their entire lives the answer is probably going to be no it's not the only thing they do and you might be thinking well this person is specifically asking do you only use duolingo to learn japanese and the answer to that is well sometimes you use your brain when you're not using duolingo so uh from my perspective the answer will generally be no most of the time i i don't think i've ever been able to say only ever able i think there might be some very fringe case where if someone asked me with the strictest of conditions i could say yes i only do this otherwise everyone no one always the best the worst singularities those things you're probably gonna get a no from me um most of the time right so one language the i have to uh bend over backwards to qualify how to conceive the idea that there is exclusively one thing or another so that's kind of a thing um was there any other type of people that come up um oh there's one other one the ones that uh used duolingo and are upset so and they come in two different flavors they come in ones that i've grown and learned or i'm here to hate or condescend yeah not much in between really not not much in between but the next two big categories is probably past duolingo user they're either 
they've learned that's not for them or they learned that Duolingo has changed but they have moved on and then that's great uh, many of those people are around and I had the pleasure of picking their brains on when they did it what their experience is like so then I can inform myself in that and then you have the uh, individuals who are either passive aggressive for a very long time or not my passive aggressive sorry not passive aggressive uh microaggression we're gonna call them microaggression it's about the same thing actually microaggression so what does microaggression look like um they mean well they're tolerating they're basically tolerating So they hang around and say, oh yeah, you know, I'm just here to chill. I like Japanese hanging around. And then uh, when there's a commentary, right? Like when someone says, oh, hey, would you uh, recommend um, start using Duolingo as a starting? And then suddenly that com the person commentates, it's like, nah, you, you might as well use Anki. Anki is a faster way, right? So um, those people, um, I'm going to be real here there are a few of them and i don't find it uh it's okay um it's okay if you don't like if you don't like uh duolingo but my genuine curiosity is do you, you um do you guys know that you're being you have microaggressions and what i mean by that is uh I don't, uh, sometimes I'm genuinely curious if people understand the difference between, uh, if they understand that they're projecting and that can make someone like me, um, feel like less reliant on your judgment, on your, um, comments, I suppose. Um, Largely, these have not been a surprise. Like, I have not been surprised by these occasional uh, common commentary. I'm more interested to know if that person's aware. So, what what, are, what am I talking about? Things like uh, someone comes on and they say something like, Oh, hey, oh, you know, I know this other game that I'm playing. It's so good. Like, this game is so good. It has everything that the game you're currently playing does well. And it does it even better. You should try it. Like, okay. That's that's nice. I'll, I'll tell you when I get to it. Right? I'll, I'll tell you when I get to it. Uh, for now, um, it's okay. Like, it's perfectly fine. Like, this is sufficient. I'm, I'm very engaged. Like, but, but, dude, this... The game that I'm playing, the tool that I have, it's absolutely amazing. Like, this stuff is practically mediocre compared to the stuff that I have. And that, in my opinion, happens a lot. Maybe unintentionally, but at the same time, my commentary oftentimes reflects this. Like, you, you, like um, no matter what you say to a person, I'm not like... Uh, I'm not like a child who don't understand that someone is really trying to sell you on something and, and, and maybe not desperate for affirmation, but certainly would love to sell whatever they're like cooking, right? They want to sell whatever they're cooking. And my original thought is, you know, I politely decline as much as I can. And then when the aggression becomes that projection becomes even stronger, my question my then i ask direct questions i'm like if your game or your tool is so great and you clearly don't show any compassion to people who are not using it and using a competitive product why are you even here right like um this goes into a lot of statements about um how someone says they spend so much time, they save so much time using Anki and like Genki and uh, 
I, I unfortunately I don't have examples for Chinese right now because I haven't been exploring too much. I think Duolingo is doing a sufficient job right now, engaging me. But uh, other other resources, and then they're here badgering me about how I'm learning inefficiently, and my question. And then they have, in my uh, opinion, have the audacity to say they have my best interest in mind and suggest that oh i'm only trying to help you i'm like well you start by actually you know showing that you actually know what you're talking about of the other person if you can't care about a stranger if you know nothing about the stranger and i did say nothing because earnestly that's probably what they're thinking they don't have to know anything about the stranger because they know everything about the stranger and that's how they operate in my opinion i i am generalizing pretty harshly i'll take it back i'll reel it back a little bit most of these individuals would would view as everything and nothing so if you are using duolingo you are obviously every single other duolingo user if I happen to be playing a deck builder, I happen to be every other card player. That's how they do be rolling. And not only that, they make commentary and advice as though they represent some imaginary totality of groups. And all this digression leads back to what these questions make me think about all the time the idea that um instead of you know as opposed to asking um as opposed to asking what are you using right the the question is often framed from a perspective of the person the the person asking the question as in their knowledge as opposed to asking for the other person's so like oh wait so are you telling me your day is good can you explain a little bit more about what happened in your day because that that'd be really wonderful as opposed to saying oh your day was good then um i don't know i would project something which is very difficult for me at the moment like oh that means you slept well and like ace your tests or something something you need to project right project so um that's kind of the idea right uh you ask someone oh this game's crappy right and in that meanwhile the person is playing the game it's like uh sure like that that's kind of how it's read to me like um when someone goes up to you and already make the decision for you and that's kind of weird and uh it's uh, there's a silver lining to this the question is easily answered with a short response or relatively easy to answer with a short response and then i take a gamble i take a gamble and try to answer it in a longer format uh chances are in the first three or four minutes, the person's gone. So then I spend most of the time talking to my recording, which is very helpful for me because it demonstrates in real time, in actuality, what the experience is like when you're trying to learn language, especially with Duolingo in public. And you're thinking about it as opposed to not uh only concerned about your own progress anyways there you have it two frequently asked questions uh i will tease a couple of other frequently asked questions that um happen every once in a while um someone asked uh you know when some people ask me uh how long have you been studying Japanese or Chinese um, uh, luckily and unluckily unfortunately in the stream title 
And usually in the corner, right here, like in the top left corner, is a number. And that's the number of days. And unfortunately, it is very difficult now to quantify how many hours on average. But generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, in the title, there's a number and a day. And I think it's safe to multiply it by two or three hours per those days. And that's how many, that's how long I have been doing it. Right? Uh, it doesn't, you know, as I don't find it offensive or anything. Uh, it is very funny. I, I honestly, honestly think it's a bit funny how information is provided in many, many different ways. But I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir in this that um, oftentimes, like myself, it's probably easier. It's probably more interesting and fun to ask the person, right? And I totally agree. So I'm totally in that loop where sometimes I would ask the question even though the information is sticking, you know, right in front of me. So with that said, though, I wanted to clarify that how long I have been doing something is going to be honestly ubiquitous all the time because I keep track all the time and it will be displayed somewhere. There will be numbers somewhere like um, occasionally people still ask me what is the number at the end of my stream title which honestly that kind of makes me giggle inside a little like heartwarming because someone actually read the title and got to the end number and as to clarify the number at the end on my twitch videos and the number on the end on my youtube videos those are the same type of number it's the the day that i started it's the day the first day that i posted or i stream something so that those are the actual number of days i i like to count days because it reminds me it humbles me and it also gives me perspective um, of my life's journey. So if something like that helps other people, I'm more than happy to explain it over and over again because I think sometimes counting up may be sufficient for even the most nihilistic person in the long run. Like I, I like to encourage people to understand that there are many ways to remind yourself that what you do is not in vain or what you do can have a lot of meaning whether other people think it has meaning or not. Um, that's kind of like the meaning of life, right? There's no one answer and I hope everyone else finds their answer uh, at some point in their life. Um, all this stuff is part of like <laughs> asking like, oh, should I keep doing language learning, right? Um, I speak about all this stuff and yeah, it, it's all part of the experience. Um, does any of this stop me from language learning? Not really. I, I, oh, that's a interesting question too. Another frequently asked question. Uh, what am I going to do when I finish language learning i think that comes up more than once what 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 am i gonna do when i finish doing what i'm currently doing and uh i've answered this in many different ways it, it's a paraphrase because it comes in many forms some people say what happens when you're finished using duolingo like what happens when the coursework is done for duolingo what happens when you become fluent uh, what happens when you finish uh, streaming something, that kind of thing? Um, the shortest answer is the work is never done. Like, uh, I don't think I've ever done anything that has come to a conclusion. Uh, because the things that I've done is a part of me. So the short answer is it's never done. The answer is when is it finished? the most crudest example I can say is when I die is when it's done. So that's, that's like the crudest one. So no, the work is never done or yes, it will definitely be finished at one point is when I die. And other than that, 
I mean, some might even argue, figuratively speaking, no, now that this is recorded and it's sent to the ether and there's like recording and history, you know, the spiritual touching of other people and interacting with other people, legacy goes on, it's never done. That's fair enough too. I think the shorter answer here is um, when I finish something, it becomes part of the next thing. Uh, everything that I quote unquote complete or have done or not, it will continue. Now to answer the question a little bit further, I think a lot of times people are talking about the literal thing, literally using literally. So when will I be done using Duolingo? Or when will, and I have a pretty um, different answer for that. And this is will be the answer that I want to end the stream with um, and talk about. I will probably be done, quote unquote, done literally doing anything when something else more interesting comes along. It could be a stranger that comes online and tells me, hey, I have the I would love to hear you play this game that I made if you're willing to give me the time of day and I will stop and do that. Uh, I can, I will not sideline. I will try my best and not sideline anyone's other like trust in my own credibility, especially an unconditional one. Uh, it takes an incredibly brave and trusting people. And I love that. It's so unsafe. But at the same time, I miss a time when people unconditionally trust other people. Right? So, I call it a preservation of an extinct species or something. But unconditional trust even when it means like there's some monetary gain or some other things, it, it's still as unconditional as it gets. So um, to talk about how to literally stop me from language learning is to provide me with something more interesting. And that's, that's how we got to language learning. That's how video games got sidelined and whatnot, because language learning became more interesting. Um, so for me, if you want to stop me from using Duolingo, you gotta do a wonderful, coherent job of convincing me to stop using Duolingo. And not convincing me in the sense of the direct convincing. If you tell me to stop doing something just because you don't like it, that is not a compelling, intellectual, and well thought out e expression of passion. If I see someone absolutely love Wani Kani, like what I mean is if I log in and this is a, this is a very telltale sign. I, I tell you now, this is a very telltale sign. In language learning on t Twitch, the vast majority of people have Duolingo on their tag and their stream. I'm not, if you're one of them, kudos to you, I suppose it does wrote me into seeing it because I do search Duolingo. Occasionally, I look at the Duolingo section. I look at other potential, if there's any language learning section, it's usually Duolingo. And there are many content creators who put Duolingo in their tab and it sits in Duolingo and they're not using Duolingo, which is an opportunity for me. However, here's the telltale sign. When I go to their stream, and I look at their stream. They they aren't giving me a convincing demonstration that they actually enjoy doing it. I I, I really did you not like. Uh, I mean I'm not the most excitable person for sure. Like, I mean some people might actually think I'm incredibly boring, right? Uh, to each their own, right? In in that case, however, it's not enough to convince me. So. When I see someone using Anki, boy howdy, if your ability to, to tell me that I should stop using Duolingo 
and Anki will provide me with a more engaging in, engaging experience and that you absolutely love it and stuff. The examples I've gotten were not sufficient. It's barely even sufficient to convince me that anyone at the moment frame, frame of mind, right? What I have witnessed is not enough to convince me. There's, I, I hope, right? There are other people out there who, when they say, oh boy, it's time for my Anki lesson. Let's go to it. I hope to see them somewhere. Because that, to me, is kind of putting your ma money where your mouth is, right? In the sense, I like to, using Duolingo. It frustrates people. I can guarantee you it does um, frustrate people that I could be enjoying and having fun using other things. And I'll tell you now for sure, like maybe not 70 to 80% sure. This is the closing statement. If you put a tool in front of me, I will probably enjoy it if you are someone I trust, you are someone who cares about me, someone who respects me, or have an unconditional investment in me. I will most definitely do my best to find the most value out of it. Until that is possible, telling me from a word of mouth without any form of convincing evidence is like trying to sell snake oil. Um, you come to me and you say, this is the best thing, it's changed your life. It's like, okay, all right. I'm hearing a lot of you, you, you. And where is me in this equation? It's like, well, it'll help you. I'm like, I don't see anything that, I didn't see anything that came out of your mouth that said it would help me. But I explained that. Like, well, you know, you're using Duolingo. It's like, okay, so are you insisting that Duolingo doesn't help me? Like, well, yeah, Duolingo doesn't help you. It's like, well, you clearly don't know me, right? Like, you go around and you gaslight someone and then you sell your product, whatever it is. Like, they don't even have to be affiliated. The idea is the logic does not dictate that, right? Um, it might convince other people. Certainly. It will definitely convince other people. You might be like, oh, but uh, what if you, you might get worse at Japanese with using Duolingo? It's like, okay. I mean, I. Uh, you haven't established at all that you actually know what I've done and what I haven't done. So, how is it that I would ever trust or rely on? your advice at all you haven't demonstrated that you actually know so that to me is probably the final final take-home message if you like something and you are to trust me with it and demonstrate that you really like it as opposed to telling me what not to what not to do like don't don't be concerned in my opinion about preventing people from doing something offer them something better like don't don't break down your competition prove that you're the competition in my opinion uh this is a personal statement for me make a compelling argument that your product is better or whatever you're doing is passionately better without gaslighting another person into thinking they're the way they're doing it is not better than you so therefore choose you right i think there are well more than enough of that type of personalities and strategies floating around the internet it's like oh our product is better compared to this product because we do all the same and then a little it's like oh okay so uh, your goal was to be a little bit better than the other product um, so you could use both products it, it's a, a small small incremental change as a like I'm more willing to say oh I was doing my own thing 
I these inspired me, but I I went off and do my own things. Like now you got my attention. Tell me more about it. At least in my opinion. Right? Uh voluntarily. If I was working on a job, oh, I sure as heck are going for the iterative design because I don't want to take risks, right? If I had to get results, I would definitely most definitely take iterative designs. You're trying to take my creative you know, my creative direction, right? You're trying to convince me to be creatively invested in something else. Well, it doesn't take a lot of creativity to criticize something and not and be completely void of criticizing your own your own product. Like uh, when someone tells me what Duolingo doesn't do, my first question I ask them is, "What does your product not do?" Uh, it's it's only it's logical, right? Like, oh, um, your product is very good at doing something, and Duolingo is very bad at doing something. It's like, okay, so okay, now at, tell me what does Duolingo do well, and what your product does poorly, because that's not how logic works. When you say only good things about what you're doing, and bad things about something else. That's not the same. That's called a double standard. You focus on the things that the product that you're against doesn't do while only talking about the pro things that your product does. If someone asks me, do I recommend Duolingo? I don't go out of my way and I don't even represent this product. I don't even identify as a Duolingo user for, for on like in, in the way that people think it does. You can take a dump on Duolingo. It's perfectly fine. Like, it's weird that people think that I I get angry if... Do you know how often I have to read Duolingo comments and Duolingo jokes and memes? Doesn't... I'm like, I'm not related. It's disheartening, certainly, for the people who work on this product. I feel... For the developers, the product itself doesn't have any feelings. Like Duolingo itself doesn't have any feelings, or at least <laughs> Falstaff and the virtual characters don't have feelings per se. But I do feel for the developer, so I will most definitely defend humans, like other humans who are being cyberbullied and all that. Right? That's that's a different story. Like, do you make a product that reaches millions of people and think that? Um, you should be defended or or be a martyr and be like stomped on for every action you've made that's incorrect like I, I don't know about that like I am willing to bet that placed in that same position that person would feel like they're entitled to have some fairness in treatment considering how wide they're influenced so Role reversal, switch of shoes. When you want to stop me from doing something or you want to convince me to do something else, switch places. Tell me, tell me that you understand me without telling me that you understand me. And then demonstrate it because I am in your, the ball is in your court. Like, I am fully committed like right now my experience with elemental exiles was amazing i i have no contact really with the corpsmen other than like the discord and stuff developers but i'll try my best i i love investing in other people who are willing to trust other people there's not a lot of that going on on the internet it, I don't think it was ever that honestly there's always the you know opportunists and stuff so whenever I find those opportunities I probably drop everything a at least drop enough time that I think I can depict that I really care and what does that look like well that looks like this so that looks like uh, spending six hours summarizing my thoughts on Elemental Exiles. So if that's not sufficient, I'm sorry, I can't fulfill your high standards. However, 
I'd like to bet that it's more than sufficient for a lot of people. I think um, I'm doing, in my opinion, a sufficient job, or at least to myself, this is my baseline. I like talking. I like summarizing. I like taking time, talking to myself, I guess. Um, trying my best to give it a ye old, you know, good old college try until I'm swept by the next provocative thinker or the next provocative, trusting, compassionate person. And don't get me wrong. When I was young, I was a sucker. I trusted incredibly reasonably and got suckered many, many times. But within getting fooled and getting, you know, getting suckered, I met tons of people that changed my life because I kept trying to be trusting. Nowadays, though, it's a little different. When you spend a lifetime trusting people, you kind of learn a, a lot of ways and a lot of um, behavioralism, right? You kind of start figuring out things on what is obvious tells and not obvious tells, low efforts and high efforts. You, you kind of learn to, how you say, form a thick skin, I suppose, but not in the sense of a thick skin in the sense of blocking everything out. I'll take a chance. I take a chance on people all the time. Someone asked me a question. I spent three hours talking about it, derail my entire, you know, derail whatever I planned. And that person already left after five minutes. Perfectly all right. You know why? Because it's recorded. Maybe whatever I said, have a chance to resonate with another person. But perfectly all right. What is done is done. I love investing in people. I think the internet has too few of that because it's often about business, efficiency, objectivity, which dehumanizes so many things. Objectivity is fantastic when you're trying to solve objective things like observations. When you're trying to solve human trust, respect, communication, language learning. Uh, that kind of involves a human component. So I would probably try to advise not to aggressively dehumanize the human component, right? There's some, the word natural is not objective. Like objective is not a word that resonates with natural, right? There's, um, in my opinion, it is ironic to think that something is objectively natural. That's subjectively natural, right? What is a natural accent? It's subjective. You can try to objectify it as much as ca you can with statistics, and then you'll still have people who disagree, right? There you have it, my friends. That is how I like to spend my review sessions. I love to talk about these things, reflect alone. I mean, I'm probably going to have plenty of people sharing their thoughts and I welcome that, right? Uh, for me, I like to take this time to reflect on my, my experiences and all the things that I've encountered and thoughts that mm, it's tangential to language learning. I think all the things that I talked about today was from language learning, it was from this experience. So that's part of the review. These frequently asked questions. Am I reacting to it? Am I answering some of these questions? Very reasonable, right? What my current structure is, right? This is what is happening, right? What I have learned in roughly the last 50 days, it's right here. It kind of looks nice. It actually is the most nicest part, like aesthetically speaking, because it's, it's quite objective. You 
either write the character or you don't i i suppose so that's what that looks like and of course we start with the introductory for anyone who's interested in what this is supposed to be there you have it right it'll get better i'll try harder we'll come up with more clever ways of summarizing i think i'm getting into the into the groove of trying to figure out how to make these a little bit more engaging or approaching and not to sound too direct or aggressive or in any way i think in the long run uh i hope that there are more i like to meet more people who have a of like mine who want to share their experiences because I'm the balls in uh, I I'm behind you on this. Um, it is so palpable when you see someone doing their thing, and it seems like they're an unstoppable force. It's it's incredible. Uh, nowadays you can't you don't see that. Uh, most of it's just edited out, in my opinion. Like most of it is edited out and for brevity for um what have you right there were time before the internet where most of your life is spent associating with the life of a select few people and nowadays i feel like i've discarded that also so i'm getting um, a chance to catch up with friends and whatnot I hope everyone else have someone like that in their lives or more a few than people in their lives. I like to uh, throw my hat in and try to at least elevate that in some way, right? A parasocial relationships are fantastic. They're very convenient. However, sometimes I wonder if there are people out there who don't, who don't have actual like what i mean is like dynamic interactions with other people in order to them in, in order to affect the way they interact with other things nowadays i think the vast majority of my internet interactions with directly with other people feel like i'm talking to someone who legitimately and i say this in a very serious tone legitimately don't have friends and what i mean by that is the friends that I, the the friendship type of thing that i constitute as friendships we might have different definitions of that like what they consider friends are things that i would not consider friends and vice versa like if i describe my relationship with my friendship it would be disconcordant with that other person so therefore there's a, a dissonance and a inconsistency between the way we communicate like you know that age old saying oh do you speak to your friend like that or do you speak to your parents like that and i would not be surprised if someone said yes that's how i speak to my friends like oh well now i know so you do go around and take a dump on whatever your friend's doing, expecting that they would do the things you want to do. I see. I did not realize that's how people interact. You might be thinking, I'm making this up. I didn't make this up. Someone literally said that's what they do with their friends. They say if they know it's right, they will tell that their friend is doing it wrong and that whatever they like sucks and then they convince them to do the right thing and do the and use the better thing and my thought was i hope your friend appreciates how much you care about them i suppose and hopefully that continues to work out i didn't want to push the buttons like i'm asking like what happens if you're wrong and your friend ends up doing the right thing but you convince them to do the wrong thing and then now you're both in the poop shit like there's so many things about that that is possible okay so that was kind of a negative standpoint on it what i'm saying is go out there develop parasocial relationships 
healthy, self-aware parasocial relationships. Use that leverage to help with expressing yourself and developing non-parasocial relationships, interpersonal relationships, right? And then, of course, another gold standard is to find something you enjoy doing, find things that enable you to do what you have to do and have a great intra relationship with yourself, right? Be happy with yourself, know the things that motivate you, be able to evaluate yourself like self-learning and language learning, develop things that will allow you to not fool yourself as in gaslight yourself. That's a thing. Self gaslighting is a thing. Convincing yourself that you're okay when you're not. For example, convincing yourself that you know more about the other person when you actually don't. That kind of thing happens a lot. The internet does it very well. The algorithm tells you what you want to hear, tells you what you want to know. It's up to you to be self aware and have a nice relationship with yourself. Then have a relationship with other people and as well as which is the more predominant thing have healthy relationships parasocially with other people right with that said good luck have fun we're gonna keep on doing this until we're out and maybe in another six months or so i'll be doing a review of something else right and there you have it. It's a wonder day review. Thank you for listening. Thanks for hanging out. If you're going to watch this later, see ya, see ya. Right. And I'll catch everyone on the next one. We'll be back with our regular studying sessions and whatnot and continuing and see what we can come up with. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.